uh, where you will see a partial solar eclipse. Okay. Um, so today's situation, let's look at what is happening today, right? So in today's situation, what you will find is that we are very close to the apex of this umbra. Okay. So this apex of the umbra is very close to touching the surface of the earth. And so at this point of time, what happens is the moon is going to mostly block out the sun. The region around um, the sun, which remains, is very, very tiny. Okay. And so this can give you an appearance of a ring of fire as well. Okay. Um, and so that's very, very special. It, it requires a lot of fine tuning, right? It requires the moon to be at the right distance. Uh, and so, and you to be present at that particular location as well. So this location is going to be in the northern parts of India. So they will see um, uh, mo uh, mostly the sun will be mostly blocked, uh, but they will see a slight ring outside as well. Uh, Surud, yes, there is one request from our viewers that can you also give us a short summary of what you said so far in Hindi? Oh, in Hindi. Um, okay, my Hindi is not that great. Uh, so let me try. Okay. Um, Anikit so can try. Yes. <laughs> so, मुझे आपको ये बताना था कि ये जो ग्रहण है, ये होने का कारण जो है, ये सूर्य और पृथ्वी के बीच में जब चंद्र आता है, तो ये ग्रहण होते हैं। तो आप इस डायग्राम में ये देख सकते हैं कि यहाँ पे सूर्य है, यहाँ पे चंद्र है और यहाँ पे अपनी पृथ्वी है। तो यहाँ पे ये जो क्षेत्र है, इधर आप अगर रहेंगे, तो सूर्य की जो पूरी डिस्क है, वो आपको दिखाई नहीं देगी। उसमें से कोई भी किरण आपके पास आ नहीं पाएगा। ये जो छाया वाला क्षेत्र है, यहाँ पे अगर आप अगर आप जाओगे तो आपको इस तरफ ट्रैवलिंग फ्रॉम वेस्ट टू ईस्ट ओवर द तो इन अदर वर्ड्स यू विल आल्सो बी सेइंग एक मिरर से आप उसकी प्रतिमा बना सकते हैं अगर आप ऐसे देखेंगे तो इस तरह का चित्र आपको दिखाई देगा लेकिन ये छाया की बजाय अगर आप इधर रहते हो इसको उपचाया कहते हैं, I think। तो ये जो उपचाया के क्षेत्र में अगर आप होंगे, तो आपको इस तरह का सूर्य ग्रहण दिखाई देगा, जहाँ पे partially cover होगा। ये जो चंद्रमा है, वो सूर्य को partially cover करे, ठीक है? लेकिन आप कभी-कभी ये जो अंतर है चंद्रमा और पृथ्वी के बीच का ये फिक्स नहीं है ये जो अंतर है वो चेंज होते रहता है मतलब उसमें बदल होता है तो अगर ये अंतर जो है वो ज्यादा हो गया तो कभी-कभी ये जो क्षेत्र है जहाँ पे आपको पूरी तरह से सूर्य नहीं दिखाई देता है वो पृथ्वी के ऊपर गिरता नहीं है उसके बजाय आप इस क्षेत्र में रहते हो जिसको हम आपको चंद्र का जो चंद्र की डिस्क है, वो पूरी तरह से कवर नहीं करती है सूर्य को, लेकिन पार्शियली कवर करती है। और ये जो पार्शियल कवरेज है, ये इधर के पार्शियल कवरेज से थोड़ा सा अलग है, क्योंकि यहाँ पे आपको चंद्रमा की पूरी डिस्क दिखाई देगी सूर्य के डिस्क के ऊपर। तो ये जो है, इसको एनुल चंद्र के काफी करीब है, ना ही काफी दूर है, तो इसलिए ये जो रीजन है, ये हम ये जो एपेक्स है इस कोन का, यानी के गॉड्स एंड डेटीज। I'm sorry, मुझे कोई हेल्प कर सकता है, समीर या अनिके? ये जो त्रिकोण का जो पॉइंट है, ये जो पॉइंट है, वो पृथ्वी के सतल पर गिरने वाला है तो ये जो पॉइंट है कि ये छाया है एक शंकु की तरह होती है और शंकु का ये सबसे ऊपरी बिंदु जिस जो है इसको इसके एपेक्स कहते हैं या ये जो एपेक्स है वो जस्ट टच करने वाला है पृथ्वी को तो ये बहुत ही स्पेशल ऐसा ओकेजन है तो इस कारण यहाँ पे अगर आप होंगे तो आपको ये पूरी तरह से कवर करने वाला है, लेकिन एक छोटी सी जो रिंग है बाहर वाली, वो आपको दिखाई देने वाली है। तो ये जो चित्र है, ये ऐसे चित्र हमें 
भारत के पूर्वी जो राज्य है हरियाणा वहां पे आपको फॉर एग्जांपल दिखाई देंगे हरियाणा उत्तराखंड एज वेल आई थिंक लेकिन पुणे से जहाँ पे हम जहाँ से अभी ब्रॉडकास्ट कर रहे हैं यहाँ पे हम इस वाले क्षेत्र में हैं तो हमें पार्शियल ब्लॉकेज दिखाई देगा तो इसका मतलब पुणे से हमें इस तरह का चित्र दिख, दिखाई देगा और अगर आप हरियाणा या जो भी एक छोटा सा एरिया है भारत में ये बेल्ट जो है एनुलर इक्लिप्स का वो राजस्थान के कुछ जिलों में जिलों में शुरू होगा फिर हरियाणा पंजाब हिमाचल प्रदेश और उत्तराखंड से होके वो नेपाल में जाएगा तो क्योंकि ये जो हम बहुत ही स्पेशल ऐसे केस में हैं इसलिए ये जो स्ट्रिप है वो बहुत ही छोटी है तो यू हैव टू बी मतलब आपको जो जगह है जहां पे वो छाया गिरने वाली है एग्जैक्टली अगर आप वहां पे होंगे तो ये दृश्य दिखाई देगा आप अगर थोड़ा सा एक सौ किलोमीटर ऊपर या सौ किलोमीटर नीचे रहेंगे तो आपको ये जो पार्शियल ब्लॉक ये जो कंप्लीट ब्लॉकेज है वो नहीं दिखाई देगा जस्ट पार्शियली ब्लॉक दिखाई देगा ओके सुरुद वी विल कम बैक टू यू बट वुड आइदर समीर और प्रोफेसर राज चौधरी कैन यू गिव अ शॉर्ट समरी इन बांग्ला एज वेल ओ अच्छा ओके आई आई कैन ट्राई दैट सूर्य ग्रहण आज के बलय ग्रहण आज के पूर्ण बलय ग्रहण बलय ग्रहण है जो चाँद आसे सूर्य और पृथ्वी मजखने छवि सूर्य हे हलदे पृथ्वी देखान एक नील गोल गोलकार गोलकृति इन आसले सूर्य पृथ्वी जे जेटा आकार एकदम एखने से स्केले ना तो चाँद चाँद जो आसे सूर्य और पृथ्वी मजखने तक चाँद छाय पड़े पृथ्वी को जगह सब जैगे न खूब छोट जैगे एबार भारत उत्तर भारत पाकिस्तान एवं किचु बिल्डिस्ट जगार मध्य दिए छाय जा छाय देखते हिमालय हिमाचल प्रदेश हरियाणा और राजस्थान किस अन्न्य भारत अन्न्य जगह पूर्ण सूर्य ग्रहण देखा जाए ना पुरोटा कि आंशिक देखा जाए छायर आ कि ना सूर्य ग्रहण शुद्ध छाय चाँद छाय पृथ्वी ऊपर छायर अनेक रकम रूप आज एक समय छवि जे रखा जा चाँद इसे गए सूर्य और पृथ्वी मजखने कंतु पूर्ण सूर्य के कवर करते जार फले आज के जेटा देखा जाए से बलय ग्रहण बलय ग्रहण सूर्य पुरोपुर ढाका पड़े ना पचानब्बे शतांश ढाका पड़े एवं चाँद चारपाशे चाँद छाय चारपाशे सूर्य जो बैर अंश से देखा जाए बला है बलय ग्रहण I think that covers it. Let's move on. Uh, yeah, Surud, would you like to give a very short summary in Marathi as well? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the Rajya hai the apn chan Surya Grahan ja hai the apn aur zub bagna raha thi thun. Ha zo telecast hai the chaur the apn purna pane prakshapan karna raha the jaja ja, ghada modi hot raha thi the chha. Uh, Tar surwa thila mala hai sangal se hota ki hai je Surya Grahan aste the kaso hota. इतले जे कई चित्र है बढ़ू शकता इधे सूर्य है मग चंद्र है मगन इधे पृथ्वी दाखिल है तर जेव चंद्र हा सूर्य पृथ्वी मधे तो बरबर ती जी सावली हि जी छाया है ती जेव पृथ्वी वरती पड़ते तिथे ग्रहण होता मन तो अपन ग्रहण जे है तो ग्रहणा वे अपन जर हि जी छाया है छाये क्षेत्र मध्य जर आसू तो अपने इधन कुछ सूर्यापासनारे किरण है अपने जे अशा प्रकार सूर्य ग्रहण है तो दिशा लगते ज्यादा चंद्रा हि जी पूर्ण डिस्क है ती पूर्णपने सूर्याला झांक टाकते 
पण त्याच्या ऐवजी या रिजनच्या ऐवजी जर आपण इथल्या रिजन वरती असू या क्षेत्रामध्ये जर असू कुठेही तर तिथे आपल्याला असं लक्षात येईल की सूर्याची पूर्णपणे चंद्राची जी पूर्णपणे सावली आहे ती ती आपल्याला तिथे पडत नाही तर ही जी आहे सावली तिला उपछाया म्हणतात कारण की काही जो भाग आहे सूर्याचा तो हा चंद्र जो आहे तो कव्हर करतो पण इकडनं येणारे जे सूर्यकिरण असतात ते तरीही आपल्याला पोचू शकतात तर त्याच्यामुळे काही भाग कव्हर होतो आणि काही भाग नाही कव्हर होतो तर त्याला आपण खंडग्रास सूर्यग्रहण असं म्हणतो तर या प्रकारचे सावलींच्या खेळामुळे आपल्याला हे सूर्यग्रहण जे आहेत ते दिसतात पण हे आपल्याला लक्षात ठेवायला पाहिजे की चंद्र जो आहे तो पृथ्वीपासून एकाच अंतरावरती नाही आहे तर तो जो फिरताना त्याचे अंतर जे आहे सूर्य पृथ्वीपासून ते थोडस बदलत राहतं आणि ते बदलल्यामुळे कधी कधी सूर्यग्रहणाच्या वेळी असं होतं की चंद्र बऱ्यापैकी लांब असतो पृथ्वीपासून आणि त्यावेळेला हा जो ही जी सावली आहे जी कोनाकृती सावली आहे चंद्राची ती आपल्या पृथ्वीवरती पडत नाही तर त्याच्याऐवजी आपल्याला ही जी प्रतिछाया आपण ज्याला म्हणू शकतो ती प्रतिछाया पडते सूर्या पृथ्वीवर आणि त्या प्रतिछायाचे जर आपण क्षेत्रामध्ये कुठे असू तर आपल्याला असं दिसून येईल की हे जी चंद्र आहे त्याचा जो पूर्ण डिस्क आहे ती आपल्याला सूर्याच्या वरती आपल्याला पूर्णपणे गोल गोलाकृती ही जी डिस्क आहे ती दिसून येते पण पूर्ण जो सूर्य आहे त्याला आपण कव्हर नाही करत तर त्याच्याऐवजी चंद्र जो आहे तो थोडासा भाग जो आहे सूर्याचा जो बाजूचा बाहेरचा बॉर्डर जे आहे ते अजूनही आपल्याला दिसून येते तर त्याला कंकणाकृती सूर्यग्रहण असं आपण म्हणतो पण आजचं जे सूर्यग्रहण आहे ते थोडस स्पेशल आहे कारण की नाही आपण खूप जवळ आहोत चंद्राच्या नाही आपण खूप दूर आहोत तर आपण बरोबर ही जी कोनाकृती जी सावली आहे त्याचा जो हा सगळ्यात वरचा जो टोकाचा भाग आहे तो जो भाग आहे तो पृथ्वीवरती पडणार आहे आणि तो भाग पृथ्वीवरती पडत असेल जर तू कुणी अगदी बरोबर त्या जागी असाल आणि ही जी जागा आहे ती राजस्थान त्याच्यानंतर हरियाणा उत्तराखंड या सगळ्या जे राज्य आहे त्या राज्यात ती तो जो बिंदू आहे तो मूव होणार आहे तर त्या जागेवरनं आपल्याला असं दिसेल की चंद्र बरोबर त्याची जी साईज आहे आणि सूर्याचा जो आपल्याला दिसणारा साईज आहे तो बरोबर मॅच्ड असेल आणि तो बरोबर मॅच्ड असल्यामुळे बऱ्यापैकी मॅच्ड असल्यामुळे आपल्याला या अशा प्रकारचं रिंग ऑफ फायर ज्याला म्हणतात की त्याच्या बाजूला जे सूर्याचं छोटस वलय जे आहे ते अगदी छोटस वलय आपल्याला दिसणार आहे तर अशा प्रकारचं जे सूर्यग्रहण आहे ते आज आपण बघणार आहोत ऑफकोर्स आम्ही हे जे प्रक्षेपण आहे ते पुण्यावरनं करत आहोत पण आमच्याकडे बरेचसे लाईव्ह फीड्स येत आहेत देशाच्या उत्तरा उत्तरेकडील भागातून देखील आणि त्याच्यामुळे आपण तिथन जे कहीं चित्र अपने मिलना है अपना पर्यत अपन पोचना वंडरिंग वाई वी हेव नॉट स्विच टू लाइफ इड येट सो वी जस्ट वॉन्ट टेल देम दैट एज दे माइट हेव गेस्ट एट सेवरल प्लेसेस क्लाउड्स आर प्लेइंग स्पॉइल स्पोर्ट Yes. so we are just waiting for a feed where uh, there is no cloud cover and we can see live pictures as soon as we get those pictures we will switch to those uh, those pictures that's right i think i think we can uh, uh, we should uh, uh, find one uh, i can't believe that it's entirely cloudy from all the way from rajasthan to uttarakhand and everywhere uh, it, 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 uh, do are we under a monsoon cloud right now probably not that So let's yeah. let's find a place in Rajasthan or somewhere like that where we can see it now. Yeah, and we hope the cloud will all clear a little later. Yeah, so we are reaching a phase. Uh, we've been half an hour into the kind of the eclipse starting in Pune, and we are reaching a phase where we are getting some feeds. So there's a Haryana feed. Uh, Surud, if you could uh, take off your uh, screen sharing. Yeah, uh, sure. We'll now uh, start showing the feed from Haryana, and. Uh, I'll also would like to uh, invite in Professor uh, Divya Oberoi and uh, Professor Priya Hasan and uh, Professor Yogesh Shauche who are joining us for the uh, next bit of time that we'll spend here. So, okay. right. So, uh, amazing explanations in the first half hour in uh, three languages. We, we, we've achieved something. I don't think other any other channel is achieving right now. And uh, <laughs> So there are several people asking on 
any of your our other uh, participants let's see how many languages we can cover today so let's see if <laughs> let's any see. of our other participants later on today can also explain the grahan in uh, in other languages yes so we, we can make a note of that languages, but we will keep uh, languages except hindi and english quite short so most of the the telecast will be in hindi or english that's right yes and then uh, um, uh, welcome to the other people i mean i'm going to uh, uh, leave and come back and drop in from time to time uh, to join us near the maximum phase that will be close to the 12 o'clock everybody should come back at, definitely at 12 o'clock but stay stay on if you can this is going to be an exciting time we'll have lots of scientific explanations from a lot of astronomers joining us uh, in very short time yeah. uh, thanks uh, professor rajendra yeah. um, so we have samir um, uh, if you don't, don't mind yes please sir yeah so i was going to say that uh, for because we have been experiencing clouds here and uh, at different places uh, there is one experiment that everyone can try um, and so this is with the mirror right um, and if you have a mirror like this at home uh, then you can try to project the image of the sun using this mirror on some wall and if you are trying to do it now from pune for example i was trying to do it with my daughter in the morning just to show her that this works um then you will be able to see the disk of the sun just make sure that you project it at a very far away distance uh, and you use a mirror like this it may not be just a circular shape it could be any shape uh, and it's perfectly fine um and you should be starting to see some partial solar eclipse uh, just with this small uh, kind of piece as well that's a good use of a household uh, instrument right now i also have a small mirror placed in my window i can see that the sun is going off and on through the clouds still i can't really go out of the window to do this thing i think uh, i i i we will we will be shifting very soon uh, to a scene where uh, you all are seen on the uh, youtube channel but alongside there will be a small window in which we will be showing the uh, live uh, events that we are getting so uh, it's like a picture in picture in a tv window so uh, but then we we will continue with the explanations and uh, we have uh, uh, sir divya uh, joining us he is uh, also the uh, secretary of the astronomical society of india and a solar astronomer so that's uh, a double <laughs> combination that we have right here so um, dr div uh, would you what would you like to say about this thanks amir thanks everyone well this is certainly a wonderful event to be uh, to be able to witness in in person i guess even though we are seeing it across the screen and this is such a way to demystify right what has traditionally in every culture being attributed to some supernatural power and just as our understanding about our universe our own solar system has been increasing we see this just as a game of shadows right it's it's just the blockage of light because of the moon coming in between the sun and the earth and which is giving rise to the this beautiful celestial spectacle which we see and just because there has been a lot of talk about it in the recent times about uh, how this might have an impact on the coronavirus i just wanted to sort of take a minute to say that well this is not going to deduce whatever the corona pandemic is doing in any way whatsoever right this is just blockage of light if you really want to kill the virus you need more light not less also if you think about it this like was being discussed just earlier this shadow covers only a small part of the earth and that too only for a short time so for most of the eclipse or most of the earth sorry there is no eclipse right so for them nothing is happening also there is a much deeper eclipse which takes place every night when half of the earth is in its own shadow so if the blocking of the light was going to kill the virus it would have already happened a long time ago right yeah and also uh it is the uv light which you need to kill the virus right you've probably heard about many different devices which are being made which are making use of uv light to kill the virus that uv light from the sun hardly reaches the surface of the earth it gets absorbed in the atmosphere which is there so none of the reasons which are useful for killing the virus are actually at play during this time so i'm afraid we will have to continue to take all our precautions 
uh, in spite of all the the hype which has been around there so go out only when necessary physical distancing when you're out use face masks don't touch things unnecessarily try to avoid touching your own faces wash your wash or sanitize your hands frequently all the things which you already know about i'm afraid we are going to have to continue to do so so please don't pin your hopes on the corona virus going away because of the eclipse it's going to stay with us for a while yeah. sorry to disappoint yeah yes yeah so that's that's good and i, I think people will appreciate uh, uh, astronomers especially solar astronomers uh, uh, dissipating this uh, rumor which has been going on some self claimed scientists are saying this and uh, whatever we try i think it becomes a media event uh, when there's something sensational so uh, thanks for clearing that up and uh, people are appreciating that uh, while we were you were doing that we have a uh, feed from uh, a large observatory the one of the largest observatories in india which is in hanle ladakh and uh, that's far up north and uh, very close to the belt although it will not get uh, the annularity what we are seeing now is the only feed which has a very good uh, uh, view of the eclipse so if you if you look in the uh, in the corner then you'll see the uh, view there and the sun has started becoming slightly covered by the moon the moon has started crawling over it and uh, it's starting to come in between the uh, earth and the sun there you can see i think it's it's almost a uh, Uh, 15 to 20 minutes into the uh, partial eclipse that we will see there and uh, it's it's going to start looking like a pacman <laughs> very soon and uh, so we can keep seeing this while we have uh, our other panelists give their opinions and experiences and uh, uh, explanations about the eclipse so um, may i invite uh, uh, professor yogesh shauche uh, now uh, who is at the national center for science cell sciences he is himself Uh, 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 biologist and microbiologist, and very well uh, experienced and uh, knowledgeable about, especially about viruses, which are the talk of the town right now. Uh, Divya just uh, mentioned that uh, the coronavirus will not be affected, and it, there's no relation, in fact, of, to any life on Earth and the solar eclipse. So, Professor Saushi, what uh, what is your opinion, and what would you like to share with us? Yeah. So, thank you, Samir. Thanks for uh, this. Uh, organizing this and as uh, was said uh, just now that uh, the hypothesis that uh, solar eclipse will have uh, will destroy the corona virus or something there is absolutely no logic or reason to that and there is, in fact there is no correlation between uh, eclipse and or sun and 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 the virus the only correlation a far fetched correlation is that uh, the name corona for this virus was uh, derived from the fact that uh, under the electron microscope the virus looks like solar corona that's all there is nothing more to it so the virus owes nothing to its origin for uh, 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 for any solar radiation or something something like that and it will be totally inappropriate and i would say rather foolish to think that the eclipse will uh, kill the virus the eclipse is not going to kill the virus and uh, uh, there are other ways of killing the virus as we know that uh, use of sanitizers uh, uh, use of uh, 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 your protection equipments and finally the if we are successful in getting some drug or the vaccine so these are the scientific ways of uh, killing the virus events like eclipse are not going to kill the virus so there is absolutely no biological basis to this theory so oh, that's good to know that little connection of corona and the uh, name corona virus yeah that is the only connection between the virus uh, uh, corona virus and the solar corona we in fact had a had a big uh, solar astrophysics meet in uh, in, uh, in february here at ayuka and it was impeded the many of our colleagues could not come because of the corona virus which was a minor thing at that time <laughs> we had uh, quite a few jokes going around but okay this is this is good to know thanks for explaining uh, this sir uh, there, there are people who are also asking if uh, you know uh, about this particular view uh, uh, going around saying that uh, you know uh, 
not just coronavirus but other microbes they come up and uh, infect our food and other li living uh, things around us during a solar eclipse in fact that uh, rumor comes up for any eclipse it may be solar or lunar so would you uh, would you be kind enough to explain this uh, rumor again often there is a belief uh, that uh, you should not uh, eat anything that is cooked during the eclipse or uh, the food goes bad uh, uh, when it is stored during the eclipse uh, and again i would emphatically say that there is no scientific basis to that uh, uh, there were some experiments conducted earlier by citizens center in pune and those studies show that uh, whether it is food or whether it is air at least microbiologically the microbial load in the air or in the food remains unaffected during the eclipse or even after the eclipse so i can very confidently say that at least microbiologically the food does not go bad uh, whether it is prepared during the eclipse or whether uh, it is stored during the eclipse and also the quality of the air microbiologically it does not change during the eclipse the number of bacteria present in the given volume of the air they it remains the same and it is also not the not that uh, any harmful bacteria number increases in the air uh, during the eclipse that is not true so at least from the microbiological point of view i can definitely say that air is no more toxic than what it is normally during the eclipse and food of course food remains microbiologically food remains unaffected whether it is made during the eclipse or stored during the eclipse thank you professor shauke uh, so logical point of view i can definitely say that air is no more toxic than what it is normally during the eclipse and food of course food remains microbiologically food remains unaffected I, I mean, whether it is stored during the eclipse to, uh, or stored during the eclipse their youtube videos if they are watching our uh, feed live so logical point of view i can definitely say that air is <laughs> no more toxic than what it is normally during because we are trying out this uh, food of course kind of, uh, food remains microbiologically technology food remains unaffected cast off I mean, whether it is so many, during the eclipse uh, or stored during the eclipse. YouTube videos, if they are watching uh, our uh, feed live, we also welcome so, Priya Hassan. From the point of view, I can definitely say that air is no more toxic than what it is normally during. Because we are trying out this for uh, the remains microbiologically technology to be unaffected. Whether it is stored during the eclipse or stored during the eclipse. YouTube videos, if they are watching our Uh, like we also welcome priya hasan i think yeah so i think uh, there was a technical glitch uh, we are sorry about that uh, uh, we are trying to uh, correct it um, uh, we so I, i had a question uh for uh, professor shauche actually if he can hear us uh professor shauche uh, so many people also observe that animals uh, or birds uh, they have a distinct change in behavior a distinct change in behavior uh, during the during uh, particular total solar eclipse so that is more about uh, the uh, light uh, be being uh, becoming very very low and which confuses is animals so can you tell something more about this yeah it is true that people have made these observations that uh, uh, during the eclipse animals as well as as well as plants uh, uh, they behave as if uh, they would behave during the evening or in the night but uh, uh, that has to do with the uh, light intensity getting reduced and it's a kind of uh, feeling that uh, it's 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 a night time and that is the reason uh, both animal and plants they behave as if it's a night and uh, i do not know if there are detailed studies available uh, on this but uh, i would rather 
attribute that to uh, level of certain uh, chemical in the plant or animals getting changed, which uh, uh, respond to the intensity of light. The level of those key chemicals getting altered because of the sunlight getting reduced and then thus affecting their behavior. So it's, it's, it's because of that rather than again attributing uh, to any uh, harmful effect or something like that. Yeah, I guess I just wanted to add here, like um, as Divya said, right, there is a big shadow of the earth itself, which falls every night, right, uh, on the side of the earth where it is nighttime. And we routinely cook food during the night, we routinely keep things overnight and eat them um, at times uh, later on <laughs> as leftovers, right. And most of the time people are fine, right. So uh, I think there's nothing to be worried about uh, in terms of an eclipse. And there being some kind of a shadow which is falling and then creating uh, some issues in the atmosphere or disturbing your food. Aniket, for some reason, your uh, voice is not coming through. Uh, I, we do have, uh, I mean, we appreciate these comments and uh, we have around 4,000 people watching right now uh, 2000 on our channel and 2000 on another channel which is streaming our <laughs> content out so i i i, uh, I uh, really want these uh, viewers to uh, watch it safely and not uh, fall prey to any superstitions and misconceptions especially those which make use of something called pseudoscience which basically uh, starts to put in some scientific uh, <laughs> you know terms etc into a unreasonable uh, explanation and therefore, uh, you know, people might sometimes mistake it for a real scientific explanation. We have scientists here saying that there is no harm in an eclipse. It does not cause any kind of increase in uh, microbes, etc. It's it's actually a very tiny night, which suddenly happens in the daytime. Maybe we can uh, understand why the birds might be confused if there is a total solar eclipse happening at your place, but uh, for a little while. But then uh, they don't really they really get back to life very soon after that. So uh, that's, that's uh, amazing uh, to uh, see uh, and experience though. And uh, I hope that you will experience this uh, happening right now. Uh, if you are in the north of India, uh, if you want to watch it, there are very uh, simple ways of doing it. Of course, if you have saved any solar eclipse goggles for yourself, go use them, uh, clean them up properly and use them. Make sure there are no holes in them. And uh, otherwise, uh, as uh, we've been pointing out, you can make use of some small mirrors. If you have smaller, the smaller, the better. If you have like mirrors which are used on tiny dresses, uh, tiny mirrors used on dresses for decoration, those are the best. But of course, uh, if you have a hand mirror like Surud has here, uh, you could use it to point the light of the sun, not onto yourself, or <laughs> but onto a wall which is far off. You can also maybe if you have a big mirror, you can just make a make a, a aperture like uh, like uh, Surud has uh, made here. Uh, he has made a cut in a small uh, cut in a piece of black paper. Yeah, put it on top of the mirror. Then you can just reflect light off that uh, mirror and uh, onto a wall. A uh, whitish wall would be good enough. And lo, you will have the image of the eclipse right there. Uh, of course, the best way, the safest way is to watch our webcast. We'll be showing uh, you <laughs> live pictures from all over the annularity belt and also from other places uh, down south and slightly north of the belt because uh, we are, have several people arranging for webcasts uh, there. So uh, me, keep, uh, stay tuned to our uh, channel. We'll be there for the next one more hour almost. So uh, I now actually uh, would like to uh, invite Professor Pia Hassan to also say her uh, experience and uh, her um, explanation. Priya, please. So, so Yeah, Priya, you can go ahead. You can speak uh, if you want. Right? Yeah, so 
Samir, maybe um, uh, maybe she is uh, having trouble in getting us, uh, and she is not uh, getting the feed through Zoom, uh, but instead through YouTube. So there is a delay in between. Right, right. No, so we'll we'll just uh, uh, then I, in that time. Meanwhile, I'll admit uh, Professor Dibendu Nandi, another solar physicist. Uh, he's from Kolkata, so he's from the east of India. Uh, let let us. Uh, and I will drop off. Um, uh, audio problem. Samir. Can you hear me now? Join later. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, Priya. Hello. And, uh, uh, welcome. Can Jibia. you hear me now? And goodbye to uh, Surut, who will come back later uh, while we are experiencing the max in Pune. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh, Hello, Dibendu. How how are things there in Kolkata? Can you uh, do you have your solar eclipse goggles to see the eclipse? Yeah. You're muted, uh, Dibendu. So, uh, somebody can you hear me now? I can hear you, Anikhil. Yes. I was muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, Dibendu. Please. Tell us how, how things are there. Good morning to uh, all of you. I see that you are having a lot of fun uh, out there. So Calcutta is kind of, you know, there's a play of clouds going on. I do have my Eclipse goggles, but, uh, you know, uh, I think I'm going to watch it online because from the live feed from North India, you're going to see, you know, I, I think almost 98% of the, the coverage, which is going to be the Hi. Best. Yeah, so I, in fact, I have sent a link to everybody here in our institute and yeah. uh, families. So I hope that everybody is watching um, uh, this fantastic initiative that you folks have uh, taken up from Ayuka and the Astronomical Society of India. Uh, so I'll be here for like the next 10, 15 minutes and I'll return again at 12 because in between I have to go off to uh, a Bengali channel. Uh, you know, covering in the regional languages is also important, uh, as you know. Um, so yeah, so I, I mean, the last eclipse, uh, I don't know, Samir, if you remember, we were all together in Kerala, right? It was a... Yes, <laughs> and a total washout. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we were uh, like almost up all night, uh, waiting in excitement for the dawn to come and show us the ring. But uh, then the clouds also came along, and we missed it. And we are missing it this time as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I think in Calcutta, it's also kind of a. I, I don't know what's going to happen because there's a mix of clouds um, uh, and sunlight. Also, there's a play of clouds. So, um, it's a matter of luck whether you know when whether I think we'll catch some amount of it, but it's certainly not going to be as spectacular as you know as what's happening in in North India, right? So um, yes, yes. So uh, on, on YouTube, you can see uh, the eclipse has already started, and we are seeing the feeds. Yeah, yeah Samir, uh, we would like to point out one one thing. Initially, the uh, moon was ingressing from uh, the left side of the feed. Now it is ingressing from the right side. It is just a flip due to a uh, te technical setting in the in the feed. It is not that moon has not jumped to the other side. So viewers should note that. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Yes, yeah, that did happen uh, because we had to uh, change the orientation of the feed for some reason. Uh, Thanks. So uh, we, I, I just uh, uh, admit uh, another uh, panelist joining us from Punjab, uh, Professor Harvinda Jassal from Aisar Mohali. She is also trying to do a webcast, but I'll just keep her in and I'll uh, relay on to Priya, who uh, has been waiting uh, to speak. Thanks. Welcome, Harvinder. Uh, and uh, Priya, please continue. You're muted and uh, we are eager to listen to you. Yeah. Priya. Okay. So hi everyone. So yeah, it's an exciting moment, especially uh, you know something exciting for outreach activities. And I think the eclipse gives us a very unique uh, you know a time to do this thing, as well as a very important role in debunking myths, right? Because there are so many myths associated to eclipse, and by the time the eclipse is over, it all gets proved to be wrong, right? So you you don't have to wait too long to prove it to be uh, you know prove the myths to be wrong. Uh, so we'd all be seeing that. And also in terms of an outreach event, it's a very important outreach event. It gets people to look up at the sky and observe these things. Uh, but with the present situation, it has all become so very different because, you know, we can't be collecting people. So we are stuck onto our digital screens watching these things. Uh, but I think it is a very unique, good moment for us to actually uh, see the event. And uh, 
In Hyderabad, the scene is not too good because the monsoons have come in and uh, the sky is overcast. So I've not even gone to check it in detail, but I think it's, 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 it's definitely bad. So because of the monsoons, but I'm sure um, Harvinder will have something more interesting to share. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Priya. Uh, uh, Professor Divi Oberoi, हम आपके पास वापस आते हैं uh, हमने पिछले कुछ मिनटों में ग्रहण के बारे में अंधश्रद्धा अलग-अलग अंधश्रद्धाएं जो है इसके बारे में कुछ बातें की अंग्रेजी में आप हमारे हिंदी दर्शकों के लिए इसका थोड़ा हिंदी में समरी दे सकते हैं जरूर धन्यवाद अनिकेत तो जैसा आजकल हम सबने सोशल मीडिया में बहुत बार देखा है कि बहुत लोगों के मन में बहुत उम्मीद है कि इस एक्लिप्स की वजह से जो ये कोरोना वायरस का पैंडेमिक है इस पर प्रभाव पड़ेगा और ये खत्म हो जाएगा उससे तो आ, सच में ऐसा कुछ नहीं है एक्लिप्स का इस कोरोना वायरस पर जरा भी प्रभाव नहीं पड़ने वाला है राइट एक वो जानने के लिए वो समझने के लिए आपको सिर्फ इतना जानने की जरूरत है कि एक्लिप्स होता क्या है एक्लिप्स सिर्फ लाइट की ब्लॉकेज है राइट सूर्य से रोशनी आ रही है पृथ्वी और सूर्य के बीच में चंद्रमा है जो सूर्य से आने वाली रोशनी को रोक लेता है कम कर देता है राइट right? पूरी तरह रोक लेता है तो टोटल सोलर इक्लिप्स हो जाता है पूरी नहीं रोक पाता तो पार्शियल सोलर इक्लिप्स या एनुलर सोलर इक्लिप्स है अब वायरस को मारने के लिए हमें कम नहीं ज्यादा रोशनी की जरूरत है राइट right? तो अगर रोशनी हम कम कर देंगे तो वायरस का तो उससे कोई नुकसान नहीं होने वाला दूसरा ध्यान में रखें कि एक्लिप्स तो दुनिया के एक थोड़े से हिस्से में ही हो रहा है क्योंकि हमारे जो जो चंद्रमा है जिसकी शैडो की वजह से जिसकी परछाई की वजह से ये हो रहा है वो इतनी छोटी है कि वो पूरी पृथ्वी को एक बार में कवर नहीं कर पाती है उसके बहुत थोड़े से हिस्से को कवर कर पाती है ये भी याद रखें कि रोज रात को आधी पृथ्वी पे पृथ्वी की अपनी परछाई पड़ रही है जो कि कई घंटे रहती है ये इक्लिप्स तो कुछ चंद मिनटों का या कुछ दसियों मिनटों का है लेकिन जो पृथ्वी जो हमारी रात है वो तो कई घंटों की है तो अगर सिर्फ इस लाइट को रोकने से अगर इस वायरस ने मरना होता तो बहुत समय पहले मर गया होता आपने ये भी देखा होगा मीडिया में कि बहुत सी कंपनीज ने भारत सरकार की भी कई कंपनीज ने ऐसे उपकरण बनाए हैं जो कि वायरस को मारने के लिए यूवी लाइट का प्रयोग करते हैं राइट ये यूवी लाइट जो है सूर्य से आती है लेकिन वो अधिकतर यूवी लाइट हमारा जो एटमोस्फियर है जो उसकी गैसेज है उसमें एब्जॉर्ब हो जाती है बहुत ही थोड़ी सी वो नीचे तक पहुंच पाती है तो सूर्य से जो रोशनी इस वायरस को मार सकती थी वो वैसे भी नीचे तक पहुंच नहीं पाती है तो दुर्भाग्यवश कह लीजिए चाहे लेकिन इस ग्रहण का कोरोना वायरस पैंडेमिक पर इस पूरे जो महामारी फैली हुई है इस पर कोई प्रभाव नहीं पड़ेगा जैसी सावधानियां हम पहले बरत रहे हैं वैसी ही सावधानियां हमें आगे भी बरतनी पड़ेंगी जितना कम हो सके उतना कम बाहर जाएं, बाहर जाएं तो लोगों से थोड़े दूरी बनाकर रखें मास्क का उपयोग करें बिना किसी कारण के इधर उधर चीजों को हाथ ना लगाएं, चीजों को हाथ लगाकर अपने चेहरे को हाथ ना लगाएं, हाथों को बार बार धोएं वो सब चीजें जो आपको पहले भी कई बार याद दिलाई जा चुकी हैं उन सब चीजों का ध्यान रखें और इस ग्रहण का कोरोना महामारी पर कोई प्रभाव नहीं पड़ने वाला है थैंक थैंक यू प्रोफेसर ओबेर प्रोफेसर हरविंदर जस्सल हम हमसे जुड़ी हुई है चंडीगढ़ चंडीगढ़ से मोहाली से सो so, हरविंदर जी वहां पे के, क्या सिचुएशन है आप ये ग्रहण देख पा रही हैं जी सुबह तो हम जब उठे थे तो बहुत बादल थे और हम घबरा रहे थे कि नहीं देख पाएंगे और जैसे दस पंद्रह हुए वैसे ही बादल छट गया और इस वक्त काफी सनी है और हम देख पा रहे हैं हमारे एक कॉलीग मानवेंद्र बेरा बॉल मिरर से प्रोजेक्ट कर रहे हैं और सोशल डिस्टेंस वे में एक एक करके बच्चे वहाँ देख भी रहे हैं उन्होंने सन फिल्टर्स भी बांटे थे और हमारे अपने ग्रुप में तो लोग शेयर कर रहे हैं तो मैं कुछ धीरे धीरे फोटोज शेयर करती रहूंगी यहाँ पे आ, मेरे आ, दो कोलीग्स भी ज्वाइन करेंगे एक बायोलॉजिस्ट हैं जो कि बर्ड्स के बिहेवियर पे बात करती हैं उनका स्टडी करती हैं शीज एन बिहेवियर इकोलॉजिस्ट एंड एक हैं हिस्टोरियन रित ज्योति बंदोपाध्याय जो कि अर्बन हिस्ट्री और इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर स्टडीज पे काम करते हैं वो जैसे ही आएंगे हम उनसे बात करेंगे बट इस वक्त बिल्कुल सनी है बाहर एकदम रोशनी है और हम लोग देख पा रहे हैं so since harvinder mentioned about projecting using ball mirror uh, we also got, got image from one of our viewers from mumbai uh, who has sent us image of using uh, of projection using a kitchen equipment people can see i will just share screen for a minute uh, you can see this image 
एवरीबॉडी कैन रिकॉग्नाइज दिस चलनी है और इससे ये अभी हमें मुंबई से दर्शक ने भेजी है इमेज तो आप भी आपके घर पे ऐसे कर सकते हैं बहुत ही सुंदर और अच्छी आइडिया है सब लोग ऐसे करके अपना अच्छे से सूर्य ग्रहण का दर्शन ले सकते हैं और एक नहीं तो मल्टीपल इमेजेस मिल रही है हमें और पेड़ की छाया में भी देख सकते हैं नीचे देख हाँ ये ये और एक अच्छी आइडिया है अगर आप घर के बाहर हैं आसपास पेड़ हैं तो आप कोशिश कीजिए कि उसके नीचे जो छाया गिर रही है वो देखिए उसमें भी आपको काफी छोटी छोटी इक्लिप्सेस दिखाई देगी और आपको ऊपर देखने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी शायद ये इक्लिप्स की इमेजेस एक्चुअली ऊपर जो सूरज दिखाई देगा उसके साइज से बड़ी होंगी तो इट पे बी मोर यू नो सेटिस्फैक्ट्री टू यू देन लुकिंग एट द सन डायरेक्टली इतने के डाइज सो रीता ज्योति हैज आल्सो जॉइंड अस हरिंदर वुड यू रीता ज्योति आप हिस्ट्री पे काम करते हैं कुड यू आप अलग अलग भाषा यूज करके इंग्लिश हिंदी और बंगाली जो आपकी मदर टंग है आप बता सकते हैं आपका क्या परसेप्शन है और आप वॉइस ना सकते हैं इसको एज अ ले पर्सन वॉइस रीता ज्योति हम आपको सुन सकते हैं कुड यू प्लीज स्पीक कैन यू कैन यू हियर मी नाउ यस यस Uh, Jyoti, we can hear you. And uh, Ritu Jyoti works on urban history, informal history, informal uh, sector history, and infrastructural studies. So, वो आई सर मोहाली में ही प्रोफेसर हैं हमारे मेरे कॉलीग हैं. So, I would like his views to be uh, known to people who are logged in here over here. Ritu Jyoti, could you please speak a few words about your perception? Yeah. So, language use English, Hindi. कैरी a bad omen uh, for uh, people uh, during eclipse so maoris for example they think that if there is a total eclipse then they will win the war next war uh, that would follow uh, the eclipse so uh, 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 different cultures have their different perceptions and the very interesting thing about uh, eclipse uh, when we look at uh, different myths is that they also reveal uh, certain cultural perceptions certain cultural aspirations of different societies living in different times so myths are also archives of changing sensibilities uh, therefore uh, when a historian approaches uh, a, a, a cultural phenomenon uh, then they do not just brush aside it as of course it is unscientific we all know there is nothing called rahu eating uh, sun and then some sun coming out uh, of his um, uh, neck uh, but the thing is uh, they also uh, uh, reveal the ways in which different cultures uh, tried to reason uh, tried to engage with uh, natural phenomena so that's why i i think uh it's also important that people get to know about those myths uh and within the subcontinent indian subcontinent you have uh, uh, dozens of myths around uh, uh eclipse so it's not that the, uh, we all know the rahu thing rahu brush uh, but the thing is there are many cultures um, many tribes in india in central india for example Mm, uh, there is a very strong myth that yeah, you know date collectors come and uh, and collect date from some for example and uh, date is incurred because there is seen in the earth so if the upper part of uh, sun's body is visible then lower part is uh, locked up then uh, it is said that animals are in danger if the upper part is covered 
then humans are safe. So, uh, for example, uh, there are a lot of uh, circulating myths, not just one. Uh, it's a very diverse uh, way of engaging with the world when you don't have science, when you don't have access to uh, uh, scientific knowledge and explanatory structures, for instance. So I stop here, maybe. Yeah, thanks, Rita Jyoti. And what do you think? Uh, how should one approach, like, uh, to uh, myth, dispel some of these myths? Because some of them actually uh, come in the way of explaining science to people. Yeah. So uh, people also, I I heard uh, people using uh, scientific jargons um, uh, to explain. Uh, Eclipse, saying that you know there is a very different, um, a very uh, unhealthy ray that comes uh, during eclipse. So uh, I would say that a lot of sensitization uh, programs need to be undertaken, and also I think that you know popular science movements uh, that uh, were quite important in India uh, in various parts that have eclipsed themselves. Uh, in the last, say, uh, last uh, six, seven years, uh, I would say that it's very important that we uh, look at uh, uh, very rich traditions of uh, popular science, local popular science movements, local clubs going to people, uh, engaging with people, more engagement with people, more engagement with myths, more engagement with superstition is what is needed. Uh, I would say that for that, science need to be popularized, and that's what is needed. Uh, so scientific temper is not something that scientists only possess, right? So in society also, there is scientific temper, and that needs to be nurtured. And that nurture, I don't see within the structure of Indian state as well now. So I, I would say that Indian state also has to play a role in it. Uh, sorry to interrupt for a minute. Uh, we, viewers can also see an, another projection method which uh, is there in the right side feed from Vigyan Prasar in Kurukshetra. They have projected it on a, say, a plain paper using a pinhole. Uh, people can see that feed as well. Uh, thank you, Rita Jati. This this was a little eye opener for uh, how the scientific temperament needs to be, uh, you know, enhanced in the cur current scenario. And uh, we have had superstitions all the time. And in fact, people are asking on YouTube, why are there so many superstitions around the eclipses? Well, it's I think uh, uh, you know inertia for people to uh, let go of uh, things that were old knowledge and accept new knowledge because it may be put forward in a very complex way to them. So yes, uh, we are trying uh, our best and I hope our event also leads to some uh, myths being dispelled, some of the younger generation at least getting uh, you know, uh, convinced that uh, what science is telling them is not just an alternative theory to what old people or, or people of ancient times told. These both go along and they uh, are probably just better explanations coming from modern science. So we do that. And of course, while doing that, we enjoy the eclipse. I can see a lot of uh, feeds uh, uh, on, the, on the YouTube channel. And uh, you can also see some projection methods being used because technical defects <laughs> cause our uh, equipments to fail sometimes. So that's, that's a characteristic of science. Experiments fail, equipment fail, but then we we add that up, and uh, the experience leads to something better. So uh, we are we are watching the feeds. Uh, there are also people sending us uh, images uh, taken through their mobile phones. So uh, I, I would remind you, mobile phones are uh, just like your eyes. So we have constantly been saying that don't look at the sun with just your eyes directly looking at the sun is harmful even if it's 99 percent covered uh, suppose you're in the annularity ring uh, belt today so don't look at it uh, have a um, solar eclipse a goggle ready that it in itself cuts down the uh, light to 99 percent and still then you can see the sun so can you imagine how much light it must be giving right and so if you're using a mobile 
to uh, image the sun then also you should take care of the sensor of the mobile so uh, uh, give it a little bit of uh, thought and use a solar filter in front of it instead of your eye uh, if you're taking a picture of the sun don't look at it directly uh, you put the filter first to any optical thing that you have you put the filter first and then the lens and then you can click it and uh, we are getting very good uh, pictures uh, using this method and I, I encourage you all to do that as well but of course uh, be safe look around uh, you know look around where, whether it's safe unsafe whether there's a big group uh, you know not following social distancing etc don't be part of that but do watch the eclipse uh, we also have manjari jain who's been invited uh, here um, and harvinder uh, could you uh, introduce and uh, conduct the further discussion uh, you're on mute uh, harvinder Sorry, thanks a lot. Uh, Manjari Jain uh, is a colleague here with me in Aisar Mohali, and she is a biologist. She works on behavior ecology and evolutionary biology. Her specialization is bird behavior, and she works, uh, she works on bird calls, their acoustics. And uh, it would be nice if you can speak a few words, Manjari, about how birds' behaviors change, bird behaviors changes, change when eclipse is on. And it would be nice to hear a biologist's perspective for that. Yeah, hi. It's uh, really wonderful to be on this panel and I'm also learning so much. So thank you, Harvinda, so much for including. Um, so, um, uh, of course, we know because of the eclipse, there is attenuation in the light and uh, which is uh, one of the major environmental factor that animals use to uh, modulate their behavior. And uh, many animals actually have been studied during these uh, uh, wonderful uh, opportunities that eclipses provide us to see how this uh, modulates their behavior. And in 2017, there was this uh, study uh, by Cornell University, a bunch of colleagues from Cornell University, where they show that during the total solar eclipse, which was uh, seen in some parts uh, in the uh, US, uh, they found that the birds were uh, reducing their activity and uh, some some uh, species behave in a certain way in which they start to behave like it would they would behave during a storm or during uh, sunset so they, they reduce their flight uh, and they used uh, so base, uh, due to the reduced light uh, availability it is hard to observe wildlife so instead what they did was to use data from the radars to see how uh, uh, migration patterns and flying activity of birds, etc., is reduced during the uh, total solar eclipse. And um, they also find that there are some birds that uh, show some sort of a behavior which, in which it, it's almost as if they are confused. So they actually increase their flight just uh, before uh, the total so solar eclipse, and then they come back to their perch. So all kinds of interesting things uh, birds uh, sort of show. We are on campus, on Aysar Mohali campus, we are doing some observations right now. We are measuring uh, activity levels of uh, this group of uh, birds. We call them uh, jungle babbler or saat bhai. And uh, they are cooperative breeders. So we are seeing how their parental care or nesting behavior, these things, how they change due to the uh, eclipse. So do they come back to their roost? Do they start... Uh, behaving as if it is night time is it night time activity or is it something different so that is what currently right now students are out in the field they are uh, doing all of this but there was one one thing that i wanted to talk about animal behavior very quickly uh, about uh, these animals which we cannot see uh, uh, with uh, just naked eyes and we uh, need to observe them using microscope these are called planktons so these are zooplanktons which are animals that are uh, found in uh, 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 water bodies and there are of course phytoplankton which are sort of plants if you like um, so uh, a lot of study has gone in to show how uh, the plankton behave differently during the eclipse and uh, with respect to phytoplankton to see how the light uh, and the change in this light levels affects their primary productivity or how much uh, food if you like is being produced by these uh, plant like things and for the zooplankton, which are like animals, if you like, uh, to see the migration patterns. So if you think of the surface of water, there are different kinds of communities at different uh, levels, uh, depth of the water. And uh, during the night time, what happens is uh, many zooplankton, especially copepods and rotifers, uh, it is seen that they actually do a surface migration. So they come up to the surface during night time. And in the daytime, they go down. So people have seen, and this is one group from uh, India itself, uh, 
led by professor uh, shubhro kumar mukhopadhyay uh, and they published their findings in uh, the journal called limnology where they show this uh, change in the migration pattern during the pre brief period of this total eclipse so within the few minutes you can see that this migration pattern is completely altered so where they see surface crowding for some species some others go down and it's absolutely incredible so the few minutes of the eclipse allow us a peep hole if you like into uh, this amazing world of how animals respond to light and that i think is very interesting it is interesting Once we know something about the babblers i will let her when they know uh, and she will probably professor share jain, it. professor jain i have a question yeah uh, so you said your students are right now outside in the field uh, observing sadbhais uh i think uh, means maintaining uh, social my, distance yeah i this is my guess but today eclipse is happening in the morning hours and uh, so birds also have their daily rhythms so yeah. uh, eclipse in the morning hours and change of light during morning hours would may have a different effect as compared to some eclipse which going, which is going to happen closer to sunset sure what, what you you feel about that yeah so one would expect that uh, also the period of darkness or uh, near darkness uh, one would expect that would matter so given that this is at noon time where their activity is fairly high we do expect to see some interesting patterns there we do so my hypothesis and my student does not agree with me which is fine that i i expect them to start behaving as if it is sunset and they uh, return back to the roost and the parents to return back to the nest so these are cooperative breeders which means that all group members participate in parental care of the chicks so all kinds of all the uh, individuals in the group should be going to the nest at all times but during night time i expect that it should be the parents who have the maximum investment in the chicks they should be around the nest so i expect to see that uh, certain individuals they come back to the nest at this time i don't know we'll see the more important thing is they are out and they don't uh, come back just to hide from superstitions <laughs> they, <laughs> yes of course <laughs> yeah. right maybe maybe at uh, maybe thousands of years ago that may have been the case with humans because they would then fear any kind of darkness and uh, it could which have is, led to this yeah which is okay i mean we didn't know probably people didn't know enough and uh, yeah yes yeah that's what we try to point out that uh, it's it's all the all the uh, things we call superstitions they are there in the society because there have been some reasons of fear of the unknown and it has continued so at, at that time maybe it would have been safer to be inside when it's dark and uh, now when it's not then it's not relevant and then we can probably keep calling it superstition uh, samir i would like to uh, take up couple of uh, questions from the audience yes. so uh, and i would like to bring uh, professor priya hasan here uh, so there are people are asking uh, which household items can be used to view eclipse safely so you can talk about that and then there is somebody who also mentioned that he or she is using x ray film to view eclipse so you can talk about uh, that as well uh, priya you are on mute yeah so thanks aniket yeah so i think uh, one of the, the the recent picture which was shared of the sieve right the sieve showing the eclipse i think that really looks very beautiful because each individual hole acts like a fin hole and you get the the image which looks really very nice so uh, actually it's anything which has a small aperture the ideal one being a sieve and i think the sieve image really comes out very nice uh but um, like we mentioned earlier also x ray films and all obviously are not the right thing to be used because uh, you know it's a misconception people think that if they use x ray films that will be safe enough it's definitely not safe enough and you should not be using x ray films it's it's best to have uh, you know uh, from a from a good place if you have uh, eclipse uh filters or solar filters or glasses but this time because of the covid you know issue we could not um distribute them or people did not uh, feel comfortable buying it from places because uh, of the contact problem uh but but yeah i would say the ideal most ideal kitchen appliance would be the sieve the sieve really gives you a good image yeah okay this is also uh, a time for a short summary in regional languages so priya can you uh, get, do a summary of what we can expect in next one hour or something like that uh, in <laughs> cuz there are several uh, people from the north watching and uh, yeah i'm going to harvind the next for punjabi yeah sure 
Okay, so you want me to speak in Hindi? In Gujarati. Oh, in Gujarati. Okay, yeah, okay. Gujarat, Rajasthan, yeah. Punjab, Haryana, all watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, um, chalo Gujarati ma baat karu chhu. So amra apre uh, eclipse jo yeh chhe, grahan jo yeh chhe, chhe sharu thay gayo almost dus vaake sawar thi. Ane uh, tamhe loko um, uh, social distancing maintain kari ne projections thi. Tamhe eclipse ne saras rite thi joy sakho chhu. Simplest projection chhe ki chhani vaapri ne. एक्सरे फिल्म यूज करव बेस्ट है प्रोजेक्शन पहला भी बात थी थी कि सैल फोन विचारे कि सैल फोन फिल्टर जरूर पड़ से तो टेलिस्कोप के कैमरा के फोन जो ते यूज करो एनी तमने फिल्टर सोलर फिल्टर यूज करने जरूरी है तो याद तो ते फिल्टर यूज करो जो तरी पास फिल्टर ना हो तो प्रोजेक्शन थी जो एंड डिपेन्डिंग ऑन ते क्यार हो छो वन ओ क्लॉक वे मेक्सिम आने आई होप ते अमरु ए सी एप जो है स्मार्टफोन मे एप है एन्युअल सोलर एक्लिप्स तब प्ले स्टोर थी शोधी सको एने डाउनलॉड कर सको और स्पेसिफिक लोकेशन एक्जेक्ट टाइमिंग्स जो सको एंड तो एट प्रेजेंट अगर तरी पास फिल्टर्स नहीं तो बेस्ट है कि तब प्रोजेक्शन प्रोजेक्शन कर जो लो एंड आई होप तक बहुत मजा आए जो Thank you. Thank you, Priya. My Gujarati is not so great. <laughs> yeah. uh, Harvinder, can can you uh, give a brief message for our viewers from Punjab? Yes, and I was reading the YouTube feed. There was someone asking for Punjabi, so very nice. तो मैं ग्रैंड बारे गल करा ग्रैंड जो हों सिर्फ एक परछावा है साढ़े वास्ते क्योंकि की होंगे कि जिम्मे धरती जो है सूरज के आसपास चक्कर करती है उम्मी चंद धरती के आसपास चक्कर करता है तो जो इको लाइन से आ जा कई बार इदा होंगे कि चंद जो सूरज और धरती के विचार आ जाए तो असं वो परछावे थले आ जाते हैं यह परछावा उम्मी है जिम्मे पेड़ का परछावा होंगे और पेड़ के परछावे च कोई फर्क नहीं है तो ये कई तरीके द अलग अलग तरीके के सुपरसिशन मिथ या भ्रांतियां जुड़िया हुई ने जो कि हूँ साड़ी जानकारी वादू होने करके जहाँ का हूँ कोई महत्व नहीं रह गया है जिमें तुम खा नहीं सकते इदा कुछ नहीं है तुम जिमें नॉर्मल खा सकते हो पीते हो उ खा सकते हो पी सकते हो परछावे जिम्मे पेड़ के थले बैठ के खा सकते हो उसी अजे भी तुम जो खाना चाहो खा सकते हो ये ग्रहण का कोई मतलब नहीं है नाले एक चीज है कि सूरज न कदे भी चाहे ग्रहण हो ना हो सीधे अखा ना नहीं देखना होंगे और थोड़ी अखा दे अखा का जो रेटिना है परदा है वह जल सकता है जो भी सूरज अगर देखना हो तो फिल्टर न ही देखना होंगे और फिल्टर भी ए नहीं कि कोई एक्सरे की फिल्म ले ली या कोई एक्सपोज फिल्म ले ली वो एक स्पेसल सोलर फिल्टर होंगे जो कि लेना पैदा है ठीक है तो वही जिम्मे थोड़े मोबाइल फोन भी कहें फोटो ले ली है पर मोबाइल फोन भी थोड़ी अखा वागर ही है वह भी सेंसर सड़ सकता है सूरज की रोशनी वो वास्ते भी थोड़ा फिल्टर न इस्तेमाल करने की जरूरत हैगी है तो तरीका सब तो अच्छा यही है कि तुम सूरज न प्रोजेक्ट करो जिम्मे एक शीशा लैके ओनू दूर दीवार से परछावा लै लो छावा लै लो और सूरज की इमेज न दीवार से देख सकते हो ना जिम्मे पहला इस फीड च देखा गया है कि कोई छाननी लैके छाननी के थ्रू था छाननी के थ्रू जी रोशनी थले फर्श से आ रही है ओनू तुम देख सकते हो तो थो पूरा सूरज का ग्रहण आराम न दिखेगा तो तुम जरूर देखो ए एक कुदरत का बहुत सोहना नज़ारा है यह देख चो थो प्रोजेक्शन च सेफली देख चो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है अरे बहुत सोहना नज़ारा है जो कि बहुत घट हों तो इन्ना घट हों तो उन्होंने देखना भी पाता है थैंक यू धन्यवाद आशा है कि सबको अपनी अपनी भाषाओं में ये जो एक्सप्लेनेशन है ये पसंद आ रहे होंगे और हम भी कोशिश करेंगे कि थ्रू आउट हम ये करते रहें हमारे एक्सपर्ट्स अलग अलग भाषाओं में आपको समझाएंगे और शॉर्ट में आपको बताएंगे कि क्या क्या कर सकते हैं क्या नहीं कर सकते अभी आप देख रहे हैं कि एक्लिप्स धीरे धीरे बढ़ता जा रहा है 
और आपको जो ग्रहण है उसका फेज जो हम कहते हैं वो भी बढ़ता हुआ दिखाई देगा हमारे फील्ड्स में तो आप देख सकते हैं इसमें एक और आप आपको चीज बताना चाहूंगा कि हमारी हमारा भारत का जो भाग इस शैलो के अंडर आने वाला है उसमें काफी लॉन्गिट्यूड है तो जो जो वर्टिकल लाइंस होती हैं कोऑर्डिनेट सिस्टम की अर्थ की तो उनको कहते हैं लॉन्गिट्यूड्स तो आ, हर लॉन्गिट्यूड हमेशा आ, सूरज के नीचे रहेंगी ऐसा नहीं है और इसी वजह से आप पता है कि आपको आपको पता है पृथ्वी गोल है इस वजह से हर लॉन्गिट्यूड पर सूरज धीरे धीरे खिसकते हुए आता है और आ, ये जो परछाई जो हमें आज आ, देखने को मिल रही है चांद की वो धीरे धीरे अलग अलग लॉन्गिट्यूड को टच कर रही है और जो पूर्व की और सॉरी पश्चिम की ओर के जो जगह है उस पर ये परछाई पहले टच कर रही है और इस वजह से आपको आ, अगर आप फील्ड में ध्यान दें तो ऊपर की तरफ जो आ, पीले रंग का या ऑरेंज रंग का आपको इमेज दिख रहा है उसमें आपको सूरज ज्यादा आपको ग्रहण में दिख रहा होगा क्यों इसका कारण यह है कि वो राजस्थान से फील्ड है गुजरात और राजस्थान के आसपास की फील्ड है उसमें से आपको पता चलेगा कि वहां ज्यादा ग्रहण ऑलरेडी हो चुका है परछाई ज्यादा मात्रा में वहां पहुंच चुकी है जबकि हानले जो कि बहुत ज्यादा पूर्व की ओर है उसमें अभी आपको सूरज थोड़ा कम ढका दिखाई देगा इसके अलावा अलावा हमारे फील्ड में लैटीट्यूड कवरेज भी है लॉन्गिट्यूड के साथ तो आप देखेंगे हानले ये बिल्कुल उत्तर की तरफ है उत्तर लद्दाख में और नीचे कोडाई कनल ऑब्जर्वेटरी से आप फीड देख रहे हैं जहां आप को सूरज की इमेज दिख रही है ये फ्लिप्ट इमेज है ये टेलीस्कोप से ली हुई इमेज है ये फ्लिप्ट है और आ, हम आ, वहां से डायरेक्ट फीड आपको दिखा रहे हैं इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स इंडियन सो जो है उसकी आ, ये ऑब्जर्वेटरी वहां पर है एक काफी फेमस सोलर फिजिक्स ऑब्जर्वेटरी वहां है जो कि सौ से भी ज्यादा सालों से वहां पर है और आ, हमें सोलर फिजिक्स के काफी अच्छे अच्छे डेटा उन्होंने दिए हैं तो आज वहां से भी लाइफ हम देख पा रहे हैं ये आ, इसकी इमेज और देखिए उसमें आ, आप देख सकते हैं कि हनले और कोडाई कनाल करीब करीब एक ही लॉन्गिट्यूड पे है और इस वजह से उनकी इमेज आ, करीब करीब आ, समान है इसके और पूर्व की तरफ अगर हमें कोई फीड मिलती जैसे कलकत्ता या फिर आगे अरुणाचल प्रदेश असम जहाँ पे अभी बारिश हो रही है वहां से कोई फीड नहीं है अदरवाइज हम देख पाते कि वहां और कम ढका हुआ सूरज आपको दिखाई देता है तो ये हुआ लॉन्गिट्यूड कवरेज के बारे में और ऐसी ही इमेजेस हम समीर ऐसे ऐसे मिलते जाएंगे हम आपको दिखाते जाएंगे जी समीर हरविंदर जी ने थोड़ी देर पहले ये बताया कि मेनी पीपल हैव दिस सुपरस्टिशन दैट दे वी शुड नॉट वॉच एट सन ओनली ड्यूरिंग इक्लिप्स इट इज नॉट सो बट इट इज नथिंग टू डू विद ओनली ड्यूरिंग इक्लिप्स सन इज ऑलवेज ब्राइट एंड you should never try directly watch uh, at sun other days we don't have to tell this to people the other days it is obvious to people in during eclipse people feel interested in watching to this uh, solar disk and that is why we have to explicitly tell them ki don't watch directly so this distinction is very important there's nothing special happening uh, in terms of radiation from sun but just that your curiosity is peaked and that is why you uh, you th- Think that uh, we should you should uh, try watching solar disk. So please avoid watching to sun directly on any day. Definitely, of course, uh, solar physicists have to watch it. So they use filters and uh, their telescopes are equipped with uh, ways to. I mean, they can they can show the sun really big, but then they have to cut out the light really uh, a lot, and therefore there are special filters for that. Yeah, and they have to also pull their telescope because it gets really hot. It, so it imagine uh, our eyes uh, being uh, you know affected by the same kind of light would be uh, really in a bad shape so we don't want to do that uh, if you have any uh, uh, of your uh, solar eclipse goggles uh, lying around somewhere from the previous eclipse which we had also popularized uh, please go ahead and watch the eclipse through them or use a small mirror to project the light of the sun onto a far off wall and you'll be able to see the eclipse many people are also sending in now the pictures uh, taken with household instruments like channi or sieves etc where we are getting nice uh, you know shapes of the eclipse 
Now in Pune, uh, I'm sitting here near the window and uh, the sun has just peaked out of the clouds which were giving us rain till now. So I'm hoping <laughs> I'll be able to uh, quickly go and peek at the sun and come back here at this time. Using goggles. Uh, yeah. Using solar eclipse <laughs> goggles. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to remind people of an experiment I'm sure all of us have done. We have all burnt paper using a lens. Right. I mean, yeah. that's just a small lens. And imagine the intensity of that light, which is burning that paper. Right? Right. That is what we are subjecting our eyes to when we look at the sun directly. So absolutely never look at the sun directly with our own eyes. So just uh, say, uh, uh, Divya, I want to stay with you. Uh, Samir just mentioned that solar physicists use different filters and uh, to watch. So I was. it is interesting he mentioned that because I was just going to ask you, what are the new instruments and uh, new uh, satellites which are going to observe sun in near future? Ah, okay. Uh, thanks, Aniket. So, to start with the question which uh, or the point which Samir was making that solar astronomers have to do something to cut down the light dramatically. And what we do typically is the following. As you know, that from the sun comes an entire spectrum of radiation, right? It has all the colors of the rainbow from violet to red. In fact, the sun uh, emits both at frequencies smaller than red and frequencies beyond the violet. It's just that with our eyes, we are limited to seeing only those. So what we typically do is that we choose a very narrow window in the spectrum, in the wavelength range. So, so that is how we cut down most of the intensity of the light, which is uh, incident on our telescopes, because it is actually quite dangerous for the telescope to be exposed to the full uh, sunlight as well. Uh, coming to the question which Aniket was talking about, it's probably useful to first think about, uh, okay, staying with the eclipse for a minute, what is it that we can study during a solar eclipse, right? So what is very interesting is that uh, the sun, as was mentioned earlier, is surrounded by a gas cloud. Uh, maybe cloud is not the best word, but it is surrounded by really very hot gas, which is what is called the solar corona. Normally, when uh, on, a, on a normal day, we are not able to see this because the sun is so much brighter that, than the corona that for the same reasons as why you can't see the stars during the day, you also cannot see the corona during the day. But when the disk of the sun is hidden uh, behind the moon, then we can see this corona. It suddenly comes into being. And if I can share an image, I would like to uh, share my screen for just a moment to do that. Just give me a minute, please. Uh, okay, here we go. Right, so hopefully on your screen, there is an image which show, which is showing uh, the a picture taken during a solar eclipse, right? I myself cannot see that at the moment, so I'm not sure what is there on the screen. Can somebody confirm, please? Yeah. Yeah, we can see it. Don't do it. go ahead. Okay. Oh, very good. Okay. So now what you can see is that there is a lot of very strange and very detailed structure which you see around the sun. And just to make it look beautiful, the on the sun has been pasted an image taken of the sun, but not during the solar eclipse naturally, right? And what you see is that there is so much structure, so much beauty in this light which is coming from around the sun. And this region is actually full of magnetic fields from the sun. And it is the matter which is trapped in these magnetic fields, which is reflecting a little bit of light from the sun, less than one millionth of the light which is coming from the sun and which we are able to see. So this solar eclipse provides us actually a wonderful opportunity to understand what is happening in this region, which is normally hidden from us. So a lot of experiments are planned all over the world to study the, these coronal regions. And in fact, to, uh, and I'll stop sharing my screen here uh, for now, and also to study these regions and a few other science aspects, a lot of uh, new solar missions have recently been either already launched or they are close to being launched. So the one which uh, we have all heard about lately is something called the Parker Solar Probe, which was launched by NASA in August of 2018. Now, this is a very exciting mission which will last till 2025. And this mission is going to go progressively closer and closer and closer to the sun. And at the end of its life in 2025, it would be about less than 5% of the distance between the sun and the earth. That is still about 7 million kilometers, but that is 
uh, still will be such a detailed view of the sun as compared to what we have ever had. Already, this is the closest man-made object which has gone to the sun. It has it is at 47% of the distance between the Earth and the sun right now. Okay? And its focus is going to be to make detailed measurements of the gases and the electric and magnetic fields which will be around this satellite, whatever is flowing past this satellite. And it will also be looking not directly at the sun, but very close to the sun to make the most detailed images of this solar corona. Another instrument which was lost, launched just earlier this year in February is the Solar Orbiter, which is a mission of the European Science uh, Agency. It will also get close to the sun, not as close as Parker, but it will come to about 28% of the distance between the Earth and the sun. And it, again, it will measure not just the gases and electric and magnetic fields. It also has instruments using which it will look at the sun directly, invisible, ultraviolet, extreme ultraviolet, and X-rays. And sometime next year, we are hoping to launch an, uh, an Indian satellite by the name Aditya L1, which actually will have, uh, again, a fantastic suit of instruments to, to give us information about the sun. It will look at the sun directly in UV light. It will have the instruments which create an artificial eclipse, to, uh, which are called coronographs, and it will look at that in visible light. It will be able to study the x-rays from the sun. It will also have instruments to measure the composition and energy of the gases which are flowing past the sun, and also measure the magnetic fields around itself. Right. So it's a really uh, excellent uh, set of instruments which will be there. And I just noticed Durgesh has joined uh, uh, us as well, who's actually the PI of one of those instruments and will be able to tell you more about it in great detail. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, lovely. Uh, and yes, we, it's a very opportune time for uh, Professor Durgesh Tripathi to join us, uh, who's the uh, leader of the team which will uh, send Aditya L1 up. And uh, they've been working hard on it for a long time. And uh, we are looking at success very soon. Uh, he has a nice background of the eclipse. <laughs> <You notice? laughs> Lovely. Yes, we are all rooting for the eclipse. In fact, I just want to uh, take a moment. So I've just set up uh, quickly because I cannot go out and, I'm, and I think I'm missing the eclipse. So what I've just set up here is uh, a, a mirror here in my window. Maybe uh, just a moment. A mirror here, and I put a piece of paper on top of it. As you can see, that is a very small yeah. hole, and it, I only had a big mirror. So I put that, and with that, I can, I can, I can, I can see on my board the eclipse, and the sun is quite a bit eclipsed. Can you see that small dot there? And that is the eclipse. Yes, so my colleague is helping me out, but you can see. So this is something simple that you can do at home if you are not able to see it directly and there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, you can always <coughs> take precautions and watch it safely from your home. Uh, first, always keep watching our uh, webcast where we have experts joining us all the time and uh, letting us know about their work and their experiences and their views about the eclipse. So let's welcome uh, Durgesh Tripathi as well. Uh, so, <laughs> welcome here, and, and of course, uh, we are eager to hear what you have to say about eclipses in general and this one in particular. Oh, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my my sound, my head is just blocking the annular part of the of the of the eclipse, which I didn't want to actually do it. I just wanted to be in a corner so that people can see what actually they should be seeing when the when the at the peak of the of the eclipse today. Um, I mean, solar eclipse for me, and I, as well as for Divya. I mean, we say that uh, the sun is uh, sun is, gives us the life for me and uh, and Divya. Not only in an indirect way, but also direct way, it gives us life because we work because the sun is there, and we try to understand what the sun is all about. And uh, the eclipses, they for us uh, hold prime importance because um, uh, I actually started uh, my PhD by looking at the, at the data which came from SOHO uh, by doing artificial eclipsing. So um, uh, that's what uh, 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 I was gonna say, that when people consider that these eclipses are not good and you know they can have problems, 
we are living for last 20 years at least me i have my career in solar physics since last 20 years and uh, they the day i started doing science or doing phd i started looking at the eclipse data and not the general eclipse but we started doing eclipse by ourselves so that so that we can get good data and try to see it um i mean i i when i was growing up the first experience i had was in 94 or 96 i don't even remember there was a total solar eclipse and at home uh, everybody was supposed to be inside uh, not taking bath uh, during the eclipse time and sitting quiet not doing anything but i i still remember me and my sister peeped out and and we had this um, this thing which people use at, as a filter for uh, for wheat flour thing right so you take that and you know and then look at look at the eclipse through that i don't know if we did it right way or wrong way but but the best way to now i know that it was to do a projection and see uh, the solar eclipse um but at that time it was such a taboo and uh, i i i feel that uh, that would have been very nice time because that was i think it was uh, one of the longest one in india uh, for for some time um but then uh, the first eclipse when i saw uh, that was in 2006 in uh, in turkey um at that time, I realized, wow, I mean, there is no wonder that people were uh, sort of scared uh, in the past because you are, you, you're not used to these things, you know. And when the sun comes and essentially blocks the, uh, no, the moon comes and essentially blocks the, the, the sun, it appears very spooky. And, you know, all these birds uh, flying away and you see this shadow moving. Of course, you have to get clear visibility of the eclipse. And I'm glad that the first eclipse I saw, it was bamboozling, you know, it bamboozled my mind. And so when people were like scared for these things, I can understand. But now we know so much about these phenomena and we know that essentially is nothing but just the shadow of the moon moving. Essentially, if somebody, if the sun is shining and a bigger person uh, right, anybody who comes in between you and the sun, it will create a shadow on your own body. It's, it's just that and nothing more like that. And it just, the, 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 the moon moves around and it comes at some point, just right, uh, gives the right uh, size and it gives you a total solar eclipse. And if the size is a bit smaller, depending on the orbit, then it gives you annular solar eclipse. So it's, it's just, it's just a, a, a matter, of, matter of fact that just uh, the moon is, moon's orbit is like that. And it turns out to be a really interesting and nice phenomena when you really want to understand what the uh, what the sun's outer atmosphere is made of. And there have been a number of discoveries done uh, just by looking at the eclipse data. For example, helium uh, was not uh, discovered at the Earth. And astronomers looking at the eclipse, and that eclipse actually happened in, uh, in India in 1869, um, uh, no, 1859 uh, in Guntur, when, uh, when astronomers, they put their spectrograph in the corona and they observed this emission line, you know, my God, a new element. And it all fit properly in the periodic table. And now we know that helium exists, but it came from the eclipse data. Uh, similarly, now we know that, uh, you know, the solar corona, which we see during the eclipses, is uh, as uh, Professor Dibya Obera was talking about, that is, it's a hot gas, you know, it's more than a million degrees. And uh, that challenges the solar astronomers for so long, and, and we don't really understand. And, and it's, it's such a beautiful, fascinating phenomena it gives that, uh, that you, know, you really need to discover new science, new physics, and you learn every day. Any data you look from the sun is, is very unique. So that's what I do. I actually get really bamboozled uh, when I look at solar eclipse. And last year, me and uh, Professor Dibyandu Nandi, Dipankar Banerjee, um, we all went to IAU meeting, which was in Argentina, and, and this was uh, arranged um, during the total solar eclipse. And the weather, I mean, it was cloudy just 10 minutes before the, the total, totality happened. And then it got so clear, and you saw this ring of fire, you know, wow, that was fascinating again. So, any total solar eclipse, any annular solar eclipse, I go around chase. Uh, last year, we did that in, uh, uh, in Kera in December, and that was beautiful. I mean, we did only see some part of it because it was hide and seek phenomena, as uh, Sabir said at some point, you know, hide and seek of uh, celestial bodies. And uh, that was fun as well. I'm, I'm, I, we couldn't see it the, at the time when it was complete annular. 
but uh, but just being with the crowd, you know, and enjoying the the celestial phenomena, it's, it's just a unique opportunity and uh, an experience. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Durgesh. Uh, so just to update our viewers, uh, we are uh, now seeing, we have passed the maximum uh, eclipse time for the westernmost longitudes in India, like Mumbai and uh, uh, I think also Pune. And we soon will be reaching the annular phase in the Rajasthan field, uh, which we are going to see at the top. Uh, we are also getting a lot of interesting images from our readers, uh, our viewers. I will uh, share some of the images in some time. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we can uh, go back to uh, Professor Priya Hassan. Uh, Priya, uh, we uh, several people mentioned uh, eclipses, uh, uh, the last is eclipse. And before that, also, there was a couple of annual eclipses. Or uh, total eclipses, which uh, were in, uh, viewed from India, can you tell what uh, your experiences about watching previous eclipse, eclipses? So the last eclipse which we had in December, twenty sixth December in Hyderabad, it was partial, but uh, we had a, a, an event in a, in one of the parks in the city, and we had more than three hundred people who actually turned up for the event, and it was a really interesting, good event. Lots of people around. We followed the, 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 the thing, but we were following the theme of eclipse eating. So we, um, the, you know, we served some food, some biscuits, some tea to people while the eclipse was on as part of the debugging thing, debunking thing of making people eat during the eclipse. We also had some talks about the sun and what actually causes the eclipse, basically explaining people how there's nothing very uh, exotic happening at that time, that people need to, you know, fear the event. And uh, we spoke a little bit about the solar missions, etc., and uh, uh, the, the projections. So the children, we actually had solar filters. We have a tele, we have a six-inch Dobsonian telescope, so people could actually see the eclipse through the telescope. And uh, we also did some projection events. And uh, since it was a park in the city, so a lot of people even came home, came there who were normal, you know, morning walkers who stepped in and see that something was happening. So this was early in the morning, it's eight o'clock in the morning. So a lot of Morning workers were there, and um, it was a very successful, good event, and I think people did enjoy it a lot. Yeah. Professor Shauche, what is your best eclipse memory of any of the past eclipses? Uh, you're on mute, Professor Shauche. So that was during the last eclipse where we did uh, some experiments along with. Uh, Citizen Science Forum, where uh, uh, just to uh, debunk all these myths about uh, not eating uh, during the eclipse and food going bad and such things, we conducted some experiments in Pune as well as in different parts of the country with the help of volunteers. And we tried to find out the bacterial load in the air as well as uh, uh, we did a lot of experiments. We also tried to find out if bacterial load in the food or if we deliberately put some bacteria in the food, how do they behave? So that was a very uh, interesting experience, working along with the students, designing the experiments, asking students to conduct the experiments at three, four different locations, simultaneously coordinating those experiments, and then analyzing the data. So that was a very, very interesting experience. So Aniket, can I can I show a picture uh, which yeah, yeah, just sure. taken uh, in our dome area? So I'll just share my screen. Yeah. So can you see this picture? This was just taken uh, within our Ayuka dome. Samir, you will re uh, recognize it. Um, which you can see. So there are a number of holes in the dome, and the sunlight is just going through. So you can see all these uh, partial eclipse pictures. So multiple of them over here and this is just uh, coming through a different holes uh, from the dome so as you can see as many images as uh, as the holes this is quite fascinating isn't it yes it is very nice so i was also going to sh uh, show a couple of pictures which we received from our uh, viewers uh, this is one picture of the 
uh, from Mumbai, I suppose, where where there was thick cloud cover, and uh, cloud cover is so thick that they could directly uh, see the sun. Uh, yeah, similar experience we had in uh, in Kerala last year. Uh, I mean, the the cloud was playing the role of the filter. You know, essentially, it's just blocking the light. You can see very very dim uh, picture. So very very nice. So we are now approaching uh, the annular phase where I think more than 90% cover is there. And uh, in just few minutes, we should be reaching the annular phase in Rajasthan field. We, uh, I will also share one more picture in the meantime, which is about using trees as a pinhole just a minute so here you can see a uh, light filtering through the tree for tree canopy and pin those small uh, areas through which light sunlight can pass through the tree canopy act as pinholes and then you see lots of uh, crescents on the ground so you don't really need a fancy equipment to observe solar eclipse you can also do these kind of simple activities from your home so durgesh uh the you mentioned about the space mission which uh, India is planning. Uh, it said uh, its name is Aditya L1. So what is L1? Can you talk about that? Um, we are on, yeah. Right. So essentially, you know, uh, Murphy's laws say that uh, um, whenever you're not looking at something, things happen. And earlier when uh, people used to uh, launch satellites put into Earth's orbit, um, what they realized that all the, the large scale activities which has uh, strong space weather effects and all that would happen in the night time and therefore you would not see any data. Um, so people are looking at, uh, at a location where uh, they could have 24 seven observation uh, from the sun. And uh, it turns out that uh, the Lagrange point, the first Lagrange point is the location which is in between the sun and earth. So essentially, if you look at the two body problem, classical mechanics, you find that there are five such positions where uh, in some way, the, the gravity, to, to put it in a very layman term, the gravity between sun and earth uh, neutralizes. Uh, so there are five such points. One is uh, between sun and earth, which is uh, 15 million kilometers away from the, from the sun, uh, from the earth towards the sun. Uh, L2 is just uh, on the opposite side uh, of the Earth. So you have uh, Sun, Earth, and L2. L1 is in between. And then you have L3 on the other side of the Sun. And L4 and L5 are making some angle from the Sun-Earth line, going L4 there and L4, uh, L5 uh, below. So if you put anything at L1, so when the Earth is moving, L1 is also moving along with because it just falls on the Sun-Earth line. So if you put a satellite there, then there is no night time for that particular satellite. And therefore, you can have a 24-7 continuous monitoring of the sun. Because studying the solar activity is not only understanding the signs of the sun itself, but also whatever happens on the sun has direct impact on our space weather, uh, geosatellite uh, geo communication, um, and so on and so forth, electric power grids and, and stuff like that. So what essentially you want to do is to look at the sun, study the dynamic phenomena happening with the final aim of being able to predict. And therefore, you need to continue. Uh, just just uh, I have to stop you because we have annularity at, at Rajasthan. So wow. wow. Let's look so at the that. top field on, on the right. You can see the annular. A annular solar eclipse, and it is going to last for about 
couple of minutes so you can clearly see uh, moon uh, the dark disk of moon uh, inside the solar disk and we see a nice ring of fire this is what we have been waiting for <laughs> wow oh so we are thankful to uh, this group which has uh, shown this image from uh, rajasthan to us uh, without Alexi. to go anywhere alap see in rajasthan i like the sameer i like the name of this group cosmo sapiens <laughs> yes that's what we are <laughs> probably that that's what we are going to become when uh, as we start going to space you see at the bottom you can see uh, at some places the moon it's now touching the uh, edge of the sun and at some places you could see that it was uh, there were some tiny bead like structures so i, I wish we could uh, rewind this a bit but you can always rewind on the live feed uh, these are called bailey's beads and basically uh, uh, they appear because the moon surface is not very smooth and uh, it's not a uh, clear cut sharp disk uh, it's got valleys and mountains and because of that when the the higher uh, see them happening now also on the left edge uh, if 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 a mountain uh, touches the edge first and but then there's a valley besides it which is still letting the light through uh, we get these things called bailey's beads and this is in rajasthan where we are not going to get 99% coverage which is going to the maximum in india you can still see some of the bailey's beads happening on the left amazing this uh, site there you go and uh, so because of uh, because of the moon being slightly away from a point where it could cover the sun completely we have the moon's uh, uh, moon's uh, shadow let's say the silhouette of the moon slightly smaller than the sun and it has just finished doing a ring of annularity on the sun uh, as seen from rajasthan we i think are now about to go into annularity phase in uh, haryana and punjab in a few minutes from now uh, and after that we'll uh, uh, it will proceed into uttarakhand and into the himalayas but as i was saying that uh, you are able to see you were able to see the uh, the feed in which you could see the bailey's beads happening these are because of the valleys and mountains on the moon surface so just imagine you did not just see the moon going past it you could even detect some of the valleys and mountains there uh, lovely experience i think <laughs> and all of us are excited here and thank you all for actually sharing this moment with us it's it's been uh, you know a, a, a while we've been talking about this uh, that it will come up and we'll we'll see it happening and there it is now we can see it and we've already experienced one place uh, <clears throat> other places like hanle as you can see in the feed here are uh, going to get it uh, get the close to annularity they will not get 99% i am wishing that we had a feed from the exact belt where exact center of the belt where the moon would be seen at the maximum covering the sun and at that place you would have probably looking at today's image from the rajasthan feed you would probably have uh, bailey's beads uh, or a necklace of them shining for about 30 seconds that's uh, approximately the time uh, annularity will be seen uh, in this part of the uh, annularity belt so oh, amazing uh, this this was a thrilling experience uh, we are still waiting for uh, and hoping that uh, the clouds will clear in kurukshetra uh, and uh, the technical difficulties will go away and we'll be able to see the feed in a few moments this has happened often and uh, we have given up hope but then suddenly <laughs> at the last moment we get to see the real eclipse Yes, it does. How are you guys? Regular. <laughs> And don't forget, there's not no harm in eating or drinking during eclipse. We should celebrate this. 
uh, with nice probably a cup of coffee or something like that. Oh yes, Aniket, you are making me hungry. Yes. Actually, so uh, we have we have been joined by uh, Professor Mukherjee Chaudhary again. <laughs> uh, is here with us, and we have uh, Neeraj, uh, Dr. Neeraj Amarujam from South Africa, who has just finished uh, watching the African eclipse, and they are joining us to have some. Uh, I hope you brought your chai, but I'm definitely have my kappa here, <laughs> and we are going to have a quick sip. Uh, I have, I have actually kept it uh, co uh, getting cold. <laughs> I don't mind it being cold, and over the whole uh, period of the eclipse because I forgot to have it when I made it. So, <laughs> so there's no effect. I'm having a very stale tea, cold tea, but it's quite tasty. Uh, we, we we are hoping to get uh, more feeds uh, to the uh, to uh, dignitaries who just came in. Uh, we just uh, finished uh, looking at the. Annularity from Rajasthan uh, together. I hope you also saw it on your phone or mobile devices. Oh, lovely. So we will shift again our uh, uh, feed to Kurukshetra, where Bailey's beads might be seen as it's going to go into annularity soon. Just hold on. Uh, we, our team is working on showing the feed right away. <clears throat> Hanle as you can see, has become really thin and crescent. And there you go, Vigyan Prasar is uh, broadcasting this from Kurukshetra. You can see it's uh, the, the color is slightly pinkish reddish because of their filter. It's not because the sun has turned into something uh, weird. These things need to be filtered and we'll uh, show it full screen to you. Please don't resist any uh, any lovely emotions that might be coming. That's beautiful. <laughs> wow, this is this is great. You can clearly see a string of pearls. And now we have Excellent. the annularity. That's lovely. You have seen, all of us may have seen it multiple times uh, over last few eclipses, but still every time it, it, it still amazes you. We are at a unique location in our solar system where we have a satellite which can produce the not just total eclipse, but also annual eclipse, which is a very rare, rare thing to happen in our solar system, as far as our solar system is concerned. So, it is really amazing that we can, we can witness all this. So you can see it's 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 a it's a very fast movement. The shadow of the uh, moon actually moves across the Earth's surface. Uh, two thousand uh, disc, disc of the moon. And there you can see it's it's already reached the other edge, and we are seeing it about to touch. And that's the third contact. And, and you can already see those those high points on the moon touching the edge already and the valleys are letting some light through. Wonderful. Oh. Uh, they, they changed the focus focusing. So. I think I think people get excited at this time and they, they <laughs> just, just shake their equipment or something. But but it's it's an experience which really shakes you up and uh, it, it, you can get goosebumps from this even by looking at at it online. Uh, so great job and uh, we are happy that we could get the uh, feed for for the annuity from Vigyan Prasar, which is doing it from Kurukshetra Haryana. For this uh, solar eclipse, the greatest eclipse is going to be near Doshimat in Uttarakhand, but unfortunately, we don't have a feed from the, that area, right? 
right? We, 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 don't, we don't have any links right now. And uh, uh, it's, it's always a challenge in this uh, times when uh, there's a curfew everywhere. <laughs> People are needing to get a pass to get any, uh, even groceries sometimes. And they have these people have dared to go out and set up these things, uh, this uh, equipment to show us this uh, eclipse. But however, there, there might be possibilities that their battery ran out or things like that, which happen, which are very practical uh, uh, things. And uh, I think this is going to be the the, only, the last uh, annularity feed that we will see. Because we'll keep looking at uh, uh, other feeds and uh, see the gradual change in the shape of the sun over the next two hours when the eclipse slowly ends and uh, we uh, come to the end of the program. So, but we still have a lot of experts coming back to us and I can see uh, uh, our friend Arvind Ranade in the Vigyan Prasad feed. <laughs> well, he's not joining us here, unfortunately, but uh, you can just get a glimpse of him. So uh, we can we can turn back to uh, the experts here, and uh, we can ask them their reaction. What 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 do you think? Yeah, uh, we'll, let's start with Professor Shauche. Uh, what was the how many? So this is your uh, how many eclipses you have seen so far, and what uh, what is your, your reaction this time? I mean, I have seen. Uh, couple of uh, eclipses so far but i would say that this was today's was the by far most exciting experience because of uh, all these discussion with the experts and uh, feed from all over the country from different places by far this was the most exciting experience uh, i had today and uh, the the event of annularity that was uh, a really 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 very exciting experience watching it from uh, from the Feed. Thank you, uh, Durgesh. हमारे हिंदी दर्शकों के लिए आप हिंदी में कुछ बताएंगे. हम आपने पहले बेलिस बीड्स के बारे में भी कुछ कहा था अंग्रेजी में आप थोड़ा हिंदी में फिर से बता बताएंगे तो अच्छा होगा. हाँ. सूर्य ग्रहण. So. Uh, सूर्य ग्रहण जो होता है मेरे लिए या फिर आ, मैं पहले बोला था कि आ, पहले जब सूर्य ग्रहण होता था तो आ, आप पूर्व सूर्य ग्रहण जब देखेंगे तो बहुत डरावना लगता है तो आज के बहुत साल पहले जब इतनी सारी चीजें हमको आ, नहीं पता थी एस्ट्रोनॉमी के बारे में और सन अर्थ मोशन के बारे में तो लोगों को आ, डर लगना थोड़ा संभव भी होता था लेकिन आज के हम इतना कुछ जानते हैं कि जो सन और जो सोलर इक्लिप्स होता है इसमें ऐसा कुछ नहीं है इस साल अबाउट की मून मूव करता है और हमारे और सन के बीच में आ जाता है और जहां पर उसकी शैडो पड़ती है वहां दिखती है ऐसे नथिंग मोर लाइक कि हमारे और सन के बीच में कोई आ गया उसकी शैडो हमारे ऊपर से गुजर गई हो बहुत थोड़े समय के लिए रहती है तो इसेंशियली वो मून का शेडो पड़ता है हमको एक लक्ष्य दिखता है तो लेकिन जो इसका एक्सपीरियंस होता है आई मीन अगर आप टोटल सोलर एक लक्ष्य देख लेंगे तो इट्स माइंड बॉगलिंग आई मीन यू कांट डिस्क्राइब इट इन वर्ड्स बट एनुलर दिस इज माय फर्स्ट एनुलर एक एक्चुअली तो जो मैं पूरा पूरा देखा हूं वो भी ऑनलाइन फीड में और With lot of people, I mean, eclipse watching हमेशा अच्छा होता है जब आप लोगों के साथ देखते हैं अकेले बैठ के देखना is all fine, but uh, when you have people around, बहुत सारे लोग होते हैं तो आप उसको एक mind में record कर सकते हैं कि लोगों की feelings क्या होती हैं और किस तरह से uh, आप अगर ऐसी जगह पर जाए जहाँ पे birds होती हैं तो the birds start flying यू वे यू नो दे स्टार्ट ट्वीचिंग तो uh, वो एक्सपीरियंस बहुत अलग सा होता है uh, आपको आप कुछ और बोल रहे थे मैं पूरा सुन नहीं पाया आपका सवाल की था क्या नहीं आपने पहले बेलिस बीड्स के बारे में जो बताया तो वो हिंदी में आप बता सकते हैं तो इफ यू कैन से इट योरसेल्फ इन हिंदी सॉरी नहीं आप बेलिस बीड्स कैन यू हियर मी 
Hello. Yes, yes, I can hear you, uh, Niket. Uh, uh, only thing I'm saying that uh, I request you or um, or or Samir to say that in Hindi. <laughs> It'll be sort of difficult for me to express myself completely. नहीं दुर्गेश आपने काफी चीजें बताई और एक अभी जो हमें देखने को मिला और अनुभव करने को मिला ये था बेलीज बीट्स का नजारा तो अभी आपने देखा कि सूरज की जो प्रतिमा हमें गोल अच्छी सी दिखाई देती है उसके सामने चांद आ गया था अपने पथ पर घूमते हुए और इसके वजह से हमें आज ग्रहण दिख रहा है लेकिन इसमें आज हमें ये भी पता है कि चांद अपनी दूरी पर जो घूमता है वो थोड़ी सी लंब गोलाकार है मतलब एक एलिप्टिकल शेप में है इसलिए कभी कभी वो पृथ्वी से थोड़ा दूर होता है और कभी पृथ्वी के जरा पास होता है आज वो इस ऐसी स्थिति पे है कि थोड़ा सा दूर है जिसके वजह से वो सूरज को पूरा ढक नहीं पा रहा है और इस कारण से हमें एक स्पेशल एक्लिप्स दिखाई दे रही है मतलब हम कभी कभी हम तो डरते हैं कि जो पूर्ण सूर्य ग्रहण है उसे नहीं देखना चाहिए वगैरह लेकिन आप देखिए दुनिया में ऐसे भी लोग हैं हमारे तरह और काफी ऐसे लोग हैं जिन्हें ये देखना पसंद है और हम उसको चेज करते हैं जैसे अभी दुर्गेश जी ने कहा कि उन्होंने भी इक्लिप्सेस देखी हैं सबने यहाँ पे इक्लिप्सेस देखी हैं अलग अलग समय पर लेकिन आप देख सकते हैं पार्शियल इक्लिप्स जो कि इसमें सूरज थोड़ा सा ढका दिखता है आप देख सकते हैं पूरी इक्लिप्स संपूर्ण इक्लिप्स जिसमें सूरज पूरा ढक जाता है लेकिन ये स्पेशल इक्लिप्स है उसमें भी जिसमें सूरज करीब करीब नब्बे प्रतिशत से निन्यानवे प्रतिशत तक ढका जा रहा है आज और इस वजह से जो चांद की सतह पर जो कुछ गहरे गहरे खाइया हैं या फिर कुछ ऊंचे पहाड़ हैं उसकी हमें यहाँ पे एक झलक देखने को मिल रही है ये कैसे तो आप देख सकते हैं कि अभी अगर आप इधर रिवाइंड करके देख लें बाद में तो आप देख पाएंगे कि उसमें आपको चांद की जो एज है उसकी और सूरज की एज के बीच में कभी कभी कुछ छोटे छोटे ऐसे मणि जैसे दिखेंगे तो आप सोचेंगे कि चांद अगर गोल है एकदम समान है तो ये कैसे हो रहा है तो आपको बता दूं कि इसको कहते हैं बेलीज बी बेलीज बीट्स और ये सम, काफी समझा हुआ एक फिनोमिन है जिसमें चांद की सतह के ऊपर जो पहाड़ है उसके और वैलीज के बीच में से प्रकाश हम तक पहुंच पाता है जब ये एज दोनों टच होती है और इस वजह से हमें वहां पर एक सुंदर माला जैसी दिख सकती है या फिर माला के मणि जैसा कुछ दिख सकता है तो आ, आपको पता है कि सोलर एक्लिप्स में डायमंड रिंग हमें दिखाई देती है और लेकिन ये एक स्पेशल एक्लिप्स है जहाँ पे कंप्लीट नेकलेस हमको मिल सकता है समीर वी हैव आई फीड फ्रॉम हानले इन लद्दाख एंड देर इज अ मैक्सिम इक्लिप्स देर एट द मोमेंट हनले जो लद्दाख में है यहाँ पर भारत की कह जा सकती है कि दूसरी सबसे बड़ी दूरबीन स्थित है सारे खगोल शास्त्री उसकी तरफ उसका इस्तेमाल करते हैं और आज लेकिन वहां से एक स्पेशल फीड हमें मिल रही है इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स की तरफ से और आप देख सकते हैं कि जिसमें हनले की फीड हमें मिल रही है और करीब करीब नब्बे से ज्यादा सूरज वहां पर ढका हुआ दिखाई दे रहा है एक ऑलमोस्ट ऐसे लग रहा है कि एक वो चांद ही है लेकिन उल्टा है इसमें जो डार्क आप चीज देख रहे हैं वो चांद है और जो प्रकाशित भाग जो देख रहे हैं वो सूरज का एक छोटा सा हिस्सा है जो कि चांद के पीछे से हमें दिखाई दे रहा है अभी कि यहाँ पे मैक्सिमम फेज है हनले में हम इसे कुछ करें फुल स्क्रीन दिखाने की तो और उसके साथ साथ राजस्थान में आप देख सकते हैं ऊपर ही अभी सूरज धीरे धीरे बाहर निकलने लगा है चांद के पीछे से और उसकी झलक हमें ज्यादा ज्यादा दिखाई दे रही है लेकिन दोनों अभी बहुत सुंदर क्रेसेंट शेप जिसको कहते हैं चंद्राकार शेप में दिखाई दे रहे हैं दोनों फील्ड्स में सो लेट्स लेट्स ब्रिंग इन नीरज नीरज फ्रॉम साउथ अफ्रीका नीरज वाज अर्लियर विथ एनसीआर इन पुणे एंड नाउ ही हैज मूव्ड टू साउथ अफ्रीका एंड ही इज नाउ चेयर ऑफ द आउटरीच कमिटी ऑफ द अफ्रीकन एस्ट्रोनॉमिकल सोसाइटी So, Neeraj, what was the experience of eclipse in the in African continent? Uh, hi, yeah. Uh, I think my video is off. So, Neeraj, you can go ahead. Samir will switch on the uh, video. Okay. Yeah. So, I am right now in Cape Town in South Africa. Uh, we Cape Town does not have an eclipse, unfortunately. Uh, the shadow does not fall on Cape Town. However, the eclipse started here in Africa. It started uh, at the edge of Democratic Republic of Congo, went through Central African 
uh, Republic, uh, South Sudan, and uh, Ethiopia and Eritrea, and then went on to the Arabian Peninsula and then to India, where you are seeing it right now. Uh, so here we had a large campaign uh, across many countries. Uh, we, we had, you know, we had done resource material like posters and handbooks, got them translated in various languages, uh, and the three teams. Uh, one in Ethiopia in the path of annularity in Lalibela, uh, in one in Nairobi in Kenya, and one in Arusha in Tanzania, who were transmitting the eclipse through the telescope, which we just finished seeing. The eclipse is finished in Africa now, and we handed over the eclipse to you guys now to watch. Uh, and very soon, I think in a couple of hours from now, the eclipse will then move on uh, to Taiwan and then end in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, so in some sense, you know, all of us, like Durga said, are stuck in our houses. Uh, eclipse is something to be enjoyed together in public with your friends and family. Uh, usually you would gather in huge numbers in public parks and planetaria to see it together. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, we can't. But, in, but then because of that, I think something very nice happened, which is that uh, a number of people across so many countries have made an effort to, to produce uh, live feeds from the telescopes. And, and the fact that I can sit here in Cape Town and watch the eclipse progress like a Mexican wave, you know, uh, from from Central Africa to East Africa to Dubai to to Pakistan to India and then to Tibet and and then China and then you know uh, the rest of Southeast China and then uh, Taiwan and there are feeds from outside the path of annularity, you know, from all the way from Russia the north to you know Indonesia and 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 uh, South Korea and Vietnam and the fact that I can see all these different feeds from across the world. And see the eclipse progress bit by bit, bit by bit, where you know it leaves one place, it starts another place, etc. Kind of brings us all together in another sense, and I think it's really nice, and and, and that that that's been happening as well. So we are asking everybody how, uh, how many eclipses you have seen in the past. So what is your count? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I want to make it a point to eat. During the eclipse, uh, <laughs> in front of everybody. Yes, we invite uh, everybody to eat. It, it's it's almost lunch time, and there's no reason to not eat at this time. So yeah. uh, let's do. Yeah, and please, yeah, please do eat and drink. No, so here is just morning for us here. Uh, I think I think there was an eclipse, the 1980 eclipse uh, when I was in Chennai. Of course, uh, was a, was a disaster in terms of public relations. I know the government had told people not to go out of the houses, unfortunately, and everybody was was indoors. I wasn't allowed to go see it by my family either, unfortunately. And then there was a partial eclipse later when I was in high school, which I saw uh, and, and showed all my neighbors uh, you know, in Chennai. But the first, the, the total eclipse I saw, which, which I'll never forget, was in Kalpi in, in Uttar Pradesh in 1995. When I was doing a master's, we all took buses and went down and saw, saw it. And that was just amazing. That happened during Diwali. And you know, there were some 500 of us in this huge uh, Maidan in Kalpi. Uh, you know, people are shouting and screaming, and you know, we all call it students. And eclipse progressed, and that some of us, you know, with with cameras and telescopes, and totality happened. It was in the belt of totality, and then this complete silence. Right? Not just the entire world became silent because you know, uh, but every imagine five hundred college students becoming completely silent and not shouting and screaming because you know, it was just completely awe inspiring. I think somebody earlier mentioned as to what a, what an experience it is, and. In the past, you know, and, and when I saw the total eclipse, you know, it was it was one of the best moments in my life. But I could also begin to understand why cultures across the world uh, were scared. You know, if you do not understand what the eclipse is due to, it could be a scary experience because we know what it is and understand it is an awe-inspiring and, and an amazing experience. But it could be, you know, you understand why it was scary to people, right? Uh, and then uh, I saw the annular eclipse uh, last year in December 26 from from the, again the path of annularity in Uti from the Radio Astronomy Center of MCRA, which again was was simply amazing. It was very different from total eclipse, uh, and it was amazing in a very different way. And of course, we all seen enough lunar eclipses. You know, the lunar eclipses are much more common, and we've seen a lot of them. And this is my first eclipse I'm seeing from across the world without leaving my living room. <laughs> That's it. Uh, that's a big array of experiences. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we all want to be eclipse chasers, right? So, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, let's move on to Professor Raichaudhuri. So, you, what is, what about you? You also also would have you had your fair share of eclipses. No, I, I, I'm not an eclipse chaser, but uh, um, uh, very much the uh, the same ones that uh, that Neeraj talked about. Uh, uh, 1980, I remember. Uh, I. I did not listen to my parents. Uh, my mother did not want me to go out, but I did. 
but uh, there also we had to watch it uh, um, uh, through television at that time. Um, uh, but uh, um, uh, actually, uh, we were uh, I, I, I was in Calcutta at that time, and we did not uh, have a very good view. The best view was ninety five. Ninety five. Uh, and like Neeraj, I was I was in Rajasthan. In fact, from Ayuka, we had a whole big trip. Uh, uh, future director of Ayuka at that time was Naresh Dadish. The Naresh Dadish's uh, uh, native village, uh, Churu, in in uh, in, uh, in Rajasthan, was in the zone of totality, and a lot of us went together. And one of the things that I won't uh, forget ever is the fact that this was the morning after Diwali. And the Diwali, uh, um, uh, and through the night we traveled uh, in a bus through villages which were lit by these little diyas all over. And in the in the entire night, um, the little uh, little uh, lamps uh, were were uh, outlining all the little houses in the villages. And we went through there, and we reached the, reached this little village. And then um, uh, in, in the morning, early morning, the this whole spectacle, the, the first real real eclipse of my life. Uh, uh, was absolutely mind blowing because it was a quite a long eclipse, and uh, as as you said earlier in this uh, in this broadcast before, eclipses change your life. And every single eclipse, it's like seeing the Taj Mahal. You go there, and every time you go back, it surprises you. And every time you see an eclipse, it surprises you because not not because you know it is different, but it is a, a almost. It, that's the closest to a religious experience I've had, and I'm not a religious man. And of course, uh, you know, you need to drink and eat during the eclipse. And we we've been doing this, and we had we you know very good food uh, during that trip as well. But what what happens in the eclipse is that you also <clears throat> uh, look at nature itself, and nature stands still. Suddenly, uh, light goes away, and uh, and, uh, and 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 the birds are unnerved. The animals are unnerved. They 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 think that there's something uh, unnatural is happening, and, and we know, of course, this is un not, nothing unnatural. This is a natural thing. It's a shadow of the moon, but it hasn't happened very uh, very often. But you can that tells you, as you said before, why humans have been uh, um, uh, very afraid of it. I mean, we've known that this is the shadow of the moon for a long time. Aryabhatta in the uh, the sixth century worked it out, and Aryabhatta told us it is that. So uh, it, it's not that we didn't know that 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 this is. Um, but but then people tell us from myth, from all kinds of things, that uh, it's going to be um, um, bad for us. It, the Rahu and the Ketu and all kinds of uh, stories uh, come from our myths. Uh, but you know, e all through our tradition, even our tradition, I'm not going to the Western tradition, even in Indian tradition, the mathematicians, the astronomers. The, even the astrologers, like uh, like uh, Aryabhatta, who was working out um, uh, positions of uh, of uh, uh, the the stars, the planets, etc., uh, through mathematics, worked it out. I mean, it's a very rational explanation. The fact that it is it is a shadow, and the fact that it happens, it doesn't happen all the time, uh, is 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 fantastic. Uh, in the next uh, hundred years from India, we will see another five eclipses, and so in my lifetime, if I stay in India. I might not see many, but uh, of course we are mobile, and as Neeraj pointed out, we can see now everything through the internet, and you can actually follow the whole thing. This is the first time I think um, such an eclipse uh, is being followed across India like this. You know, it's wonderful. I mean, I, I in the December eclipse too, I did not uh, see so many feeds coming from uh, this this path, um, and the weather I don't know was wasn't that good, but now suddenly it started off cloudy in many places. But it looks like uh, we've started to see all this. Um, I went on uh, several TV channels today uh, in between uh, um, talking to you in the morning and then. And it is amazing how much discussion on Indian TV channels is happening on the relation between the coronavirus and the corona of the sun. And, and it's, it, it, these, these words get mixed up. Uh, virus, uh, somebody said from Madras, from Chennai, that uh, the coronavirus will go away tomorrow and it's gone viral. And, and the corona of the sun can be seen during eclipses and the coronavirus. All are getting mixed up. And people, I don't know, people latch on to words rather than concepts, I think. 
And the fact that somebody in some, some, some scientist, quote unquote, apparently said that the ultraviolet rays from the sun is going to come and kill the coronavirus today. And as Divya Oberoi said in the morning too, we don't get the, uh, the, the ultraviolet rays from the sun. If we did, we would have skin cancer. The ozone layer's job is to stop the ultraviolet rays from the sun. We, in order to do ultraviolet astronomy, we have to send satellites up into space. Why would we send AstroSat up into space if we can, could get ultraviolet rays up on the Earth? So people are mind-bogglingly confused. People are confused. People think that two Tulsi leaves put in my, my, my food is going to make it all right. And we can fight the evil demon with two leaves. This is just amazingly mind boggling dumb. And, and, and so the, the fact that um, we are just looking at a shadow and under this shadow, uh, we are, we've seen something that lasts a few hours and the actual event lasts, you know, minutes, seconds, but it's beautiful. And why can't people just look at this event like a momentous event in their life happens once, twice, three times in there? I mean, I, I've known people who, ha who chase eclipses. Owen Gingrich, who I studied with uh, at Harvard University, has seen 57 eclipses in his life because he goes where the eclipses go. But if you stay in one place in your lifetime, you'll see probably one or even none. Because in, at any place on the earth, uh, an eclipse happens, a total eclipse happens every 300 years or something like that. In the same country, maybe 10 times in a century. But if you can eclipse, if you can chase these eclipses, and nothing's happened to these people, they've chased, chased eclipses all over the world. So all this discussion going on for many days about the fact that there are two uh, eclipses, two annular eclipses within a few months, and that is why the coronavirus has come and it's going to go away. And you know, people don't even think the fact that these two eclipses that you're seeing is from India only. And, and maybe Pakistan and, and some countries in, in the Middle East and, and, and Africa, as, as, as Neeraj pointed out. But this is a shadow that's moving around. And, and then, you know, you see the most people have died in Italy and, uh, and in, in Spain and, and, and in England and, and the US. Poor guys don't see the eclipse, but their people are dying because of us, because we are causing the coronavirus, because this moon shadow is falling on us. So, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that's going on in all the TV channels right now. And I think uh, we should we should stand up against it and tell people to just go out and see what's happening out there. That's wonderful. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the confusion between solar corona and uh, the coronavirus, and we have somebody who studies the corona of sun. So Dibendu, uh, let's Is come to, here. Yeah. Uh, so historically, uh, eclipses have been important for development of astronomy. Several. Breakthrough experiments have happened during the eclipses. So, like uh, helium was discovered during a during an eclipse, or uh, the. It, so, can you uh, talk about how eclipses are used in astronomical research, uh, or earlier were used before the advent of space era and things like that? Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, uh, 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 first of all, I'm happy to return back, and I've been following uh, you folks. I think you're doing a wonderful job of of. Uh, you know, showcasing this eclipse uh, throughout the country. This is a great initiative, particularly because you're pulling in uh, so many efforts from all, all around India. It's, it's just great to see the enthusiasm. Uh, so to come back to your question, um, I think the, the most spectacular uh, scientific success uh, in terms of uh, uh, utilizing an eclipse uh, for, for testing uh, some of the ideas that uh, that we have developed is is I think this eclipse ed, uh, expedition by Arthur Eddington um, uh, to South Africa. I don't, I forget the exact year. I, I think somebody here may know about 1919. it. 1919. 1919. Yes, I think that was the first uh, uh, I think uh, important test of Albert Einstein's uh, uh, theory of relativity. Uh, and uh, uh, there are some amazing stories about this uh, expedition where you know this this folks went and they up tents uh, somewhere out uh, in the wild uh, and then there's some issues with clouds and they had two different uh, uh, locations that they had earmarked but uh, somehow at the last moment things magically worked out and Arthur Hinton could do this uh, measurements and he came back uh, to the UK and, and did the analysis and that was the first uh, confirmation of, of, of uh, Einstein's theory of relativity uh, and this is like a huge this is a huge uh, uh, success, uh, early success for Einstein. And this is, I mean, 
think of it is kind of uh, funny because uh, you know another important prediction of Einstein's general theory of relativity, which is the gravitational waves, which just tested just some time back uh, based on much more sophisticated instrumentation of the huge, big, uh, you know, interferometric detector, which is which is the LIGO network, uh, which of course also IUTA is, is involved in and many Indians are, are involved in. Uh, so that was that was one of the biggest scientific successes of, of, of experiments done during eclipses. Uh, coming coming to the solar side, uh, uh, if you look at the corona, you mentioned uh, uh, work on the sun's corona. This is important from the perspective that uh, the activity that is generated in the sun's corona and uh, the evolution of the magnetic structure of the sun's corona. When I mean, the corona exists because of the sun's magnetic field and because of magnetic heating, uh, the coronal temperatures rise to something about uh, a million degrees Kelvin. Uh, so this magnetic field evolution and the structure actually determines the environment in space. So there is something called space weather. And believe it or not, the environment in space changes. And these changes are governed by the sun. And it's the coronal dynamics that governs these changes. But observing the sun's corona is, is extremely difficult under normal circumstances because the flux of photons or the light the intensity of light that comes from the sun's disk the main part of the sun is so much that it overwhelms the, the amount of light that comes from the corona which is a, a very low density region surrounding the sun uh, eclipses where where the moon basically completely covers the sun's disk and therefore stops the light from the disk uh, to reach Earth, provides this wonderful natural opportunity for the corona to become visible, uh, the faint light from the corona. And this is when we can actually test our theoretical ideas and, and the, the models for the evolution of the coronal structure, because during this total eclipses, you can actually make observations of the corona and test these theories out. Uh, so this is, I think, one of the great opportunities that eclipses provide. And so when you hear about astronomers and solar physicists chasing eclipses, it's uh, not just about fun. It's actually about serious work where they put up spectroscopic observations and other kind of observations, uh, including now polarization observations to capture the magnetic fields. And then they, they, they throw these observations out to theorists and modelers like us who test our models during the eclipse. I didn't know we have done that, uh, you know, quite successfully in the past as well. We also have now Professor Deepankar Banerjee. Uh, so, Deepankar, uh, yes, yeah. So, how was the eclipse from Nanital? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just right now. It is clearing out. It was all cloudy. And uh, just last few minutes, it has uh, opened up now and people are all outside. I just have to come in. <laughs> so I just took some pictures. Uh, so the feed, of course, we were uh, all taking it from Hanley primarily. Um, uh, Aniket, I just sure, uh, you know, can you give me five minutes because there's a call from, uh, you know, uh, uh, All India Radio. Uh, and if you just give me five minutes, I will come back. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Things in how are things in uh, Kolkata, Dipendu? Uh, so I, I, I mean, uh, I was earlier with uh, a, a Bengali news channel, Chobish Ghanta. Then in between, I my wife called me <laughs> downstairs. So there was a break in the clouds, and we could see like just around noon. I think that's when the, we had kind of a maximum uh, part of the partial eclipse that is from here. So we did get to see it, and 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 um, so Chobish Ghanta was giving this live feed, and they had representatives from very in various parts of Bengal, and I was very happy to see the enthusiasm of people. So I think uh, uh, people in Bengal are actually enjoying uh, enjoying this. And Jodi ekhane kono Bangali ra akhon shunchen, tale apna der shagotu jana ekhane namaskar. Asha kori apna eclipse dekchen. Ibang ekhane shomo ko ache Bangali dipong kora ache. Asha kori apna na ekhane kichu Scientific Toto, we can go to Eclipse of the Jante Parvenaske, Anandakurun, Eclipse and Mojalutun, among Evang Science K Agebara. 
কালচার Uh, and a, a phenomena such as this which is shared by everybody brings brings everybody together in spite of the differences and so wonderful to see and wonderful uh, uh, dipendra i wanted to point out samir and aniket uh, we i i would like everybody to go out if they are in in if if uh, the the sun is shining there and no clouds to look at the images of the eclipse under the trees because the leaves act as pinhole cameras and it is lovely out there people are taking pictures and putting it on social media and you can see if you go under a, a tree that has dense leaves and the space between the leaves act as pinhole camera you can see hundreds of eclipsed suns on the ground on the roads and it is lovely to see so if you're near a tree go and look at the eclipse on the ground tare zameen pe so our tara has zameen today you can see it Lovely. So we have very uh, uh, a, a stellar uh, range of uh, astronomers here, uh, both from solar physics and in general in astronomy. And we have three directors present uh, at this moment. So let let's uh, again uh, let's welcome, of course, uh, uh, the uh, Dr. Annapurni from uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, and also the Pankaj Banerjee will be finishing his call very soon. So he'll be with us sharing his experience from Nainital. um uh, maybe in that uh, moment uh, uh, dr anupurni could share what uh, uh, experience you had from hanley and kodaikanal and even bangalore yeah hi hi everyone so just completed the uh, we crossed over the uh, uh, maximum in hanley so uh, we were watching from all uh, all sides so in the beginning we had uh, cloudy skies in bangalore and kodaikanal but hanley was very clear so hanley feed was uh, going on pretty and full stream and uh, in in actually what happens during for total solar eclipses all our campuses are very famous for uh, uh, pretty pictures of uh, sun and you know the eclipse etc so we have a, we normally have a lot of people visiting um, kodaikanal hanley and bangalore campus also the lawns will be full of activity and everything so with the situation we hardly had any one just a Uh, our own team setting up the instruments etc and the our auditorium was converted into our wall room where uh, we have the uh, all the uh, uh, feeds coming in and uh, etc so we're monitoring uh, kodaikanal and bangalore from here and uh, hanley was also coming in uh, kodaikanal uh, cleared a little uh, after some time and bangalore kept becoming cloudy but uh, hanley we had a very good stream and then it uh, completely it was clear and uh, except during near the maximum we had a little bit of passing clouds were there but then everything uh, is okay and uh, uh, we don't have too many people in the campus because of this pandemic otherwise uh, excitement is virtual and every site we have about uh, five, between 500 to 3000 people watching the whole uh, web stream so coverage wise it's been very good but uh, you can't actually face to face feel the excitement and you know share the uh, joy of actually seeing the eclipses uh, minimal sorry uh, so i at that yeah. is that uh, all the outreach groups are taking so much efforts from all institutes and trying to put out feeds for uh, everybody to see particularly in this times when we are uh, banned to go out from our houses even yeah 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 you know, it's, it's been uh, amazing uh, we've just experienced uh, annularity view from uh, two fields and uh, all of us had good goosebumps and were going wow and yeah. <laughs> uh, enjoying the moment uh, but however i'll mention that hanley has been i think the most popular feed yeah 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 most of the other people who promised feeds are running hanley feeds so we are at a lack of feeds <laughs> <laughs> in that way however of course the the most special thing that we have here is all the uh, scientists who can put forward their views here on various aspects uh, in fact i want to spring a question to uh, uh, those present that are, 
the, the, there have been some pictures taken uh, with a very uh, good cameras and good telescopes involved. So, um, <clears throat> shall are, are we uh, also planning to do some analysis of those images and uh, maybe look at the lunar profile, limb profile, or something like that? Or could it be a, a project for college students, undergraduates, etc.? Yeah, so in our case, we have good pictures coming from Kodekanal. The resolutions are high because it's coming from the solar tower, tower telescope. The resolution is high. But then the coverage is the eclipse coverage is only about uh, 20, 30, less than 30 percent. So you will not be able to see the rim of the sun or anything like that. So that is a high resolution picture where you can work on. But then the setup over here in Bangalore as well as in Hanle is not a high resolution picture. So we are not able to. I don't know how good the resolution will be to do any particular science with it. Uh, so that is the issue. The, the uh, a, we wanted to send out send across some uh, you know good instruments from here to Hanle transfer so that we can actually set up them there. But then we could not even transport them. So the, the issues were there. So you know because of that uh, we we could set up a, a, a structure to view it, but not of a science quality images could not be obtained. But I otherwise is very well known for expeditions during uh, eclipses. We have carried out several expeditions for which even Dipankar was, uh, 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 I mean, he, he was a member of these teams. And so it is historically we have been carrying out experiments. So he's uh, a right person to speak more about the science which has been carried out. But we used to get cor uh, coronal images, you know, and also Dibyendu is there who would predict and model it and, you know, predict how the solar corona is going to view uh, during the eclipse. So they probably can say better. But I, right now, we our instrumental setup is not the optimal to perform detailed science uh, as such because uh, we haven't been able to go to this absolutely brilliant location with our instruments to set up because of the condition. Uh, let let me bring back Neeraj. Uh, so Neeraj, uh, Professor Shomak uh, Rajudri earlier mentioned that there were uh, uh, we get, we will get very few opportunities in our lifetime to watch either total or annual solar eclipses from India. Uh, so what can you tell uh, tell us about the future total or annual eclipses from India? Uh, yeah, thanks, Aniket. I just want to add to what uh, Shomak said uh, about not about the eclipse just being a shadow. Uh, you know, people say, you know, don't be afraid of your own shadow. And I think we should also stop being afraid of the moon shadow apart from our own. Uh, there'll be, so India is not going to have many eclipses very soon, unfortunately. This is going to be the last one for quite some time for the next uh, 10 or 11 years. The next solar eclipse which will be seen in India is going to be on May 21st, 2031, 11 years from now. And that will be an annual eclipse. The annual path will cut through uh, Kerala and Tamil Nadu like it did in December. And the rest of the country will see a partial eclipse. Uh, and then follow that is in 2031. Three years after that, in 2034, on March 20th, there'll be a solar eclipse. Uh, the totality will pass through like the northernmost parts of India. And the rest will see a annual eclipse. The next proper total eclipse going through India is going to be in 2064. And so that's that's quite far away, actually. Uh, and therefore, for the next few years, uh, we will be reduced to seeing eclipses through live feeds uh, of other countries, and I think uh, and I think that's that's the next best thing. Uh, I just want to add to something uh, Dibendu had said about uh, scientific advances made in eclipses, and he talked about you know advances made for science in terms of you know the theory of gravity or or helium discovery. I wanted to quickly add, if I may, uh, an important eclipse for outreach and for uh, and for uh, and uh, and for you know making modernity modern astronomy consistent with older astronomy right so there was this famous astronomer called raghunath achari working in the metras observatory in the late 1800s uh, with when it was under the british and he came from a family of panjang panjang makers or almanac makers, traditional indian uh, almanac right and he also knew modern astronomy where he was a trained astronomer uh, he then found that the tables used by traditional astronomers uh, in India were no longer accurate because the numbers they used were, were, no, were from observations long, long back. And so he had held huge debates with the almanac makers, Panjang makers, saying, look, update your tables. We'll provide you with uh, modern values for the tables. A lot of them refused. 
and the huge debate which of course ultimately was settled and and they did update the the tables of the panjangs following him but the way one of the ways he did it was very nice was he said no there's going to be a solar eclipse in 1868 and 1871 which will be seen in southern india and he said look your predictions say that this is how the eclipse will look and it will appear at this time we say based on these predictions using modern values of 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 planetary positions that it will occur at this time and then he told the people look i'm telling the public at large not just astronomers the public at large just go out and verify for yourself with your own eyes which one is correct right and and i think that's that's very interesting because it's it's one of the first times in modern history where in modern indian history where uh science was was kind of became part of the public domain and the public was public were were told that they could themselves verify uh predictions uh and 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 see which theory was right and which was wrong and so on so i think that is something in, i wanted to mention uh which i thought was very interesting uh but coming back to your question yes so so this is going to be the last solar eclipse for the next 11 years unfortunately uh and that's why this is very important that's that's why you know having live feeds from across the the world is very interesting i just i was just looking at the live feeds uh, the abu dhabi abu dhabi feed shows that the eclipse is just about over in the middle east uh the feed from taiwan say shows that the eclipse is starting the moon is just entering the sun's disk now in taiwan and the feeds from uh, you know farther south like indonesia malaysia the eclipse is yet to start right so and we are right in the middle of it in india so yeah, that's interesting too so dipankar when while you were away uh it was mentioned that you have uh, earlier la laid ai teams uh, which went to different places to stay a uh, study solar corona during eclipses so can you tell about these expeditions sure so by actually i have few by, by you know images which probably give a better uh, overview of this so if you can see my uh, screen is it uh, visible oh, yeah but, but you have to maximize yeah. the yeah, yeah yeah my powerpoint has uh, gone somewhere so i have to bring that in yeah so are you able to see my uh, screen yes. now yes okay so there are two things i wanted to uh, highlight one was uh, since dibendu was uh, you know there in the uh, in the panel he didn't talk uh, much about his uh, own work and why we really uh, you know wait for the total solar eclipse uh, you know occasions and so on one thing is you know sun is a you know magnetic star and this uh, overall magnetic field structure of the corona we do not have a very clear understanding so this is called the global field of the of the corona at a large scale and uh, some of these work actually at uh, it's happening at uh, sesi kolkata this is iser kolkata and the bindu is leading this uh, you know bunch of uh, young uh, uh, kids who are doing very uh, nice work which uh, what they do is they predict the you know solar eclipses image uh, how it will look before the eclipse uh, happens so this is uh, nice because from our based on our theoretical understanding and observations in the previous day of uh, eclipse they predict what would be the you know uh, picture of the global field and uh, this is again another example of of course the, in the prediction there are many people across the globe and uh, the bindu is uh, one of the uh, the many and as you can see with this image uh, taken on 21st august 2017 eclipse and 2019 eclipse uh, and the theoretical predictions how it was if you flip flop you see this uh, i just want to because i'm getting this opportunity so uh, you know again say few things about why people are scared about eclipses i mean what is uh, what is the history and why it is that you know we have to be so scared about it i think it's just nothing but about darkness you know i mean suddenly if you find that you know middle of the day things are uh, getting so dark so it's just uh, you know this attitude so if you go back to the historical pictures and paintings you will see that you know either somebody is eating the moon or somebody is eating the sun big demon or 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 you know some animals and even you know during the eclipses in the lower image what you see from national geographic is that people used to you know burn uh, certain objects so they put fire they will make a lot of noises to scare uh, you know this because it is it is something which is uh, you know unnatural so but you know the point is you know today in the modern day we know why eclipses uh, happen in in those times people didn't know why what is the real cause of the eclipse so this is i think a big message which need we need to do uh, thankfully you know and from since morning uh, i was in a zoom session and there were uh, you know more than 100 kids and i was continuously interacting with them i was eating uh, you know in front of them uh, having tea coffee 
uh, and, and telling them, you know, how to look at the eclipse, uh, how to make a pinhole camera and so on. I think this is a very important uh, exercise we have to do. And I'm, I'm thankful for, uh, you know, ASI for doing this. So this is uh, my experience. Again, uh, we are fortunate uh, to uh, be privileged to be able to travel to, you know, distant uh, locations with uh, big expeditions. Um, uh, but of course, we do some science out of this total eclipses as well. Uh, and so this is one example where we were a team from India led by Professor Jagdev Singh and uh, our former director, uh, Professor Siraj Hassan. And I was uh, uh, somewhat younger at that time. Uh, you can see that group picture. And we had two, uh, you know, 40 centimeter telescope. We had a spectroscopic arrangement. So this is what we observed in the in that. So there is something called a, a you know red and green emission from the solar corona. Uh, this you can only see during a total solar eclipse. In fact, incidentally, these experiments which we ran more than 10 years back actually gave us the confidence to build a coronagraph for space. In fact, the Aditya L1 coronagraph is uh, going to have these two spectral lines as a main uh, you know, source of observation. So of course, uh, we could only observe less than a minute of total solar eclipse when, while uh, we were in China. But then in uh, Aditya L1, when we are there at, uh, at L1 location, we will have these artificial uh, total eclipse conditions continuously for you know, as long as we want, at least for five years. Uh, that's the thing. So that was way back in 2009. I didn't uh, talk about even earlier, actually, I was fortunate, uh, one of the few who was flying with the Indian Air Force aircraft in 1995. Uh, from Agra, we flew out and we were a team of, uh, you know, five. We were with the, uh, with the, uh, with the Air Force uh, team and looking at the total solar eclipse. So that was way back in 1995. And then uh, to the, uh, 2010, just after the China eclipse, I was again very fortunate to travel all across to uh, the other part of the globe, this is called Easter Island, almost middle of nowhere. Uh, no land, uh, the nearest land, uh, it takes about four hours to fly. And this is a mystic island, uh, and we were fortunate to go. I think uh, Shomogda was just mentioning that we are some of our crazy guys. We, we are also called eclipse chasers. Uh, but, you know, we chase the eclipse because if you are in one location, you won't uh, get to see many eclipses. So really, you have to travel across uh, and, and see, uh, you know, these eclipses. Uh, this is the island which I was talking about, uh, uh, quite a mysterious and historical island. Uh, still, people do not understand, uh, you know, this is more than 5,000 years old, these statues uh, which are there in those islands, how it came. So the point is, you know, we, we scientists are really, really privileged, uh, uh, you know, in the name of science, which, which of course excites us, but it also gives us the opportunity to travel across the globe. This was the team, again, for this ex eclipse expedition. Even the Indian uh, ambassador from Chile, uh, he flew into this island to watch the eclipse uh, together with us. So this was a very, very exciting moment. Last year, along with the two other panelists today, uh, Durgesh uh, uh, and, and the Bindu, we were fortunate to travel to um, Argentina um, uh, in July. So this uh, movie is actually taken from uh, you know uh, at the other side, from Chile. Uh, because there is an observatory and so on, so but it was a spectacular, spectacular sight. So this is uh, my real, real experience. Uh, there is again a total solar eclipse uh, in the end of this year, in December, in Argentina. Some of us were planning to go. I think I'm, I'm sure Shomok uh, uh, there was also planning to go, but I think under current circumstances, it, it may not happen. So uh, again, it's just our excitement, you know, uh, when we really uh, enjoy what we do. And that also allows us to, uh, you know, travel across and uh, share this, uh, you know, excitements with others. Th uh, thanks, Deepankar. Uh, I think now it's time for our uh, regional plugs. Uh, so we have se uh, several uh, Bengali speakers. Uh, we can start with Bengali, a short plug about what we have witnessed so far in, in Bengali. Any, anyone can take. So, yeah, just yeah. do you want to go for that? Yeah, sure. I, I mean, Khanikon Agi in Bangladesh, the Bolam, our Boltobari, to my posting Bangi Amra eclipse at Che Puro Mojata Shitamra Pine, a life feed a Shita Paga, look on a kind of hundred ticket, North India, even the Jagat Teki Amra Dictabalam. A uh, annular data, 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 data
ব্যাপার যেখানে চাঁদ সূর্যের ভেতর দিকটা ঠেকে দিতে পারে কিন্তু সামনে বাইরের দিকে একটা ছোট্ট রিম একটা মানে ঠিক রে বেড়ে আলো 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 মানে আলোর একটা রিং যেটা যেটাকে আমরা অ্যানুলার মানে জিওমেট্রিক্যাল একটা অ্যানুলার শেপ নেয় আর কি তো এই 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 ক্লিপসটা একটা অসাধারণ অসাধারণ একটা এক্সপিরিয়েন্স যেটা অনেক বছর আমরা পাবো না সুতরাং আপনারা যেটা আজকে দেখতে পেলেন কিছুটা পশ্চিমবঙ্গ থেকে কিছুটা পার্শিয়ালি আপনারা যারা অনলাইনে আছেন তারা একটা বিস্ময়কর একটা ঘটনা দেখলেন যেটা অ্যাকচুয়ালি কমপ্লিটলি ফিজিক্স দিয়ে আমরা এক্সপ্লেন করতে পারি এবং এই ধরনের ফেনোমেনা থেকে আমরা অনেক রকম সায়েন্স পার করতে পারি অনেক রকম সায়েন্টিফিক থিওরি টেস্ট করতে পারি যেটা দীপঙ্কর খানিকক্ষণ আগে বললো সুতরাং এটার একটা একটা সাধারণ একটা ভালো লাগার ব্যাপার আছে একটা বিস্ময়কার ব্যাপারও আছে এর মধ্যে কিন্তু একটা গভীর একটা সায়েন্টিফিক পার্সিউটও আছে এই ক্লিপস যেটা যেটা আমরা কয়েকশো বছর ধরে করছি তো আপনাদের অভিনন্দন আপনারা যারা এই ক্লিপস দেখলেন এবং ধন্যবাদ আমাদের সঙ্গে থাকার জন্য Thanks, Bindu. Uh, we also have Professor Prajwal Shastri who has joined us now. Uh, Prajwal, uh, we, we can see you somewhere, you are somewhere outside. Can you tell us where you are and wh- what did you, uh, did you observe today? Uh, you have, yeah. I, am I, am I uh, audible? Yes, go ahead. Uh, so I, uh, I was very pleasantly surprised uh, by the clouds parting. because the uh, weather bureau had predicted cloudy weather here in bengaluru where i am uh, so right at the moment i'm uh, at a very uh, historical geologically uh, significant place namely lal bagh i'm standing on the big rock uh, you can see the kempegowda gopra in the background and uh, i'm watching the eclipse from here uh, it of course uh, coming close to release to final contact um there are a few friends around me uh, earlier in the day there were about 30 people uh, which is nice uh, but uh, it's also very sad because uh, bengaluru which is uh, meant to be uh, which uh, calls itself a modern city an it city a science city before that uh, in fact we just celebrate to the centenary of around with last week we celebrated his centenary uh, and he was uh, a person who played a major role uh, in uh, crafting bengal most nobody out everybody is in shops are closed restaurants are closed and everyone is huddled in uh the media hungary in has been the dominant theme over the last uh, couple of days um so that is insight but at, at the same time uh, there's a lot of uh, sadness and disappointment uh, at what is happening actually the disappointment uh, was in one way expected because we were expecting the weather to be bad but the weather has been extremely cooperative so uh, it's a beautiful sunny uh, day and i can still uh see the eclipse uh, with, with my glasses um but yeah uh, uh we also uh, did our best to try and persuade people uh to use safety glasses and goggles otherwise to just stand next to a tree uh because sun is the sun is high uh, in the sky so just stand next to a tree and watch the effects of the pinhole camera images on the ground uh before the eclipse and during the eclipse it's where we see the beautiful crescent sun images did you have any questions aniket you are muted can you hear me uh, yes uh, so uh, did anyone have any questions it's it's revealing to see uh, such a such as uh, state of uh, misinformation amongst the people where they are missing out on such a great site and in fact bangalore is in between uh, the i mean it's getting a very similar phase uh, com- uh, as compared to uh, december as well so uh, it would have been amazing if people watched it uh, yes yeah. that time and now also because following social distancing but uh, 
that's a sad state. However, uh, we have been uh, successful in showing this over the internet to many, many uh, people. And uh, they've been asking excellent questions. If, if there's any kind of information that you may want to give in, let's say, in Canada to uh, the people who are watching, Okay. Havamanate Tajneru, our Hediki Prakara, Bengaluru, Moda Kavikakito, Adre Moda Kavdila, Idek Shana, Yeldru, David to Bandu, E. Granada, Kone, Hansuana, David to Vixisi, Handa Surya, Namye Kanu and Tadu, Bahada, Prupa. Handa Surya wo bari grahana agwa aga matra kano chude bari Chandra Surya nige adda baru aga matra kano chude Chandra wo aakar dalili namge samanya magi kani chude adre Surya aakar dalili kani so dila atyanta approve da drishya ido David to elro harak bani chana gide bislu mora golo aachis sadibe yauda adru ondo mara idre bolle gele bittiro mara idre. Uh, Antha Marthatra Hogi Ninkoli, Intaha, Vondo Kandasuri, the Bimba, Neladamele, Chelliro, the Nanodi, the Javito, uh, Atwa, Sudanana, when the Kanadi Mulaka, Sudan Bimba, and Biri Nodi, a Kandasuri, Akara, Estu, uh, Apuru, Agide, Adbuta, Agide, and we have the Kandasuri Akara. Uh, and we can see, uh, still see uh, feeds from various other places. Uh, and uh, the hope you enjoyed it through your solar eclipse goggles, although we couldn't really see anything much in Pune here. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, here it's wonderful. In fact, it's better than what it was uh, during December. I wasn't here in December. I'd gone to the area of the totality, but uh, here in Bengaluru, it was uh, the weather didn't cooperate at all. Whereas today, uh, it's, it's just beautiful out here <laughs> right now. Right. Yeah, we all wish we could have been uh, outside and get some fresh breeze. Yeah. <laughs> Raining in Pune here. Yeah, but, uh, we do have have uh, some good feeds, and I think uh, in 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 the east uh, eastern countries we are having uh, annularities now. We're trying to get you the feeds right now. Thanks, uh, Prajal, for joining in uh, live from a uh, live location, not not just from your office. <laughs> yeah, good good to see <laughs> <Yeah>. Prajal actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. So uh, lovely. Uh, we, we, I think uh, the, the uh, shadow uh, is now traveling more towards the eastern regions and it is, uh, uh, it is uh, just past uh, max time in uh, Kolkata and the uh, eastern um, uh, Seven Sister states. So uh, we uh, have uh, some feeds, uh, Hanle is still showing a nice crescent and uh, hopefully we'll get some feeds from Taiwan and uh, later from Singapore and Japan which will show us uh, another crescent or uh, sorry another ring uh, well uh, crossing our fingers uh, we can uh, shift back to our other uh, experts uh, if there are anything special that you would like to say at this moment when we are crossing we have crossed over uh, the shadow has crossed over the length of india breadth of india Reaching the I, mean, I found uh, I found debunkers uh, presentation very very fascinating the work that was done with previous eclipses and we still have the Bindu and uh, Durgesh uh, on on here I would like them to also talk about uh, these experiments because uh, you were there in many of these experiments with Bindu uh, I mean in uh, in South America for example and and so can you share a little more one of the things I found fascinating was of course um, Aditya L1 which we are going to launch next year. Um, uh, is going to have a perpetual eclipse for five years, right. and uh, we are we are going to make an eclipse. We will make sure uh, Aditya L1 does not eat or drink during that uh, five year eclipse. <laughs> but uh, but the fact that we are going to have this wonderful uh, event that is linked to the the picture Deepankar showed from um, the uh, the eclipse uh, expedition in China. Um, do you have uh, talk a little bit more 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 about it? I think it was very. Yeah, I mean, so my, my first eclipse was when I was seven years old. And this, I, I, I don't really have a very good memory in general, but I, I really remember this because this was, this is 1980, I think. And yeah. and I grew up, I was born in, then in Bihar, Jamshedpur. I, I grew up, my childhood was spent in Orissa. And then I moved to Bengal. So I was in, in Orissa then. I remember we went on a trip to Konara. And we saw the, the total eclipse in 1980 from Konolak, and I have not forgotten that. that that's, 
I had this vague memory of something absolutely wondrous. Uh, and then, I mean, believe it or not, the next total eclipse that I actually saw was last year in Argentina. And this was very special because by then, you know, I had become a scientist and, and a solar physicist. Uh, you know, and the earlier one, I was just a child. And, and this was a wonderful opportunity because before we traveled to Argentina, we actually, we actually, you know, modeled, we, we developed models for the, the evolution of the magnetic structure of the corona. And we, we tested this model, we made a prediction for, for the eclipse. And then we traveled to Argentina, Deepankar was there, Durgesh was there, and we actually observed uh, the eclipse and, and, and much of our predictions actually also, also came true. And, and this is like the development of scientific ideas and scientific theories is an ongoing process. You don't necessarily get it right. We are not magicians, we, we are scientists. And we learn from our mistakes. And this eclipse has sort of provided us with an opportunity to, to improve. Uh, our understanding and the science, tweak our models to to tune it towards towards getting getting it right, with the you know with the idea, the eventual idea that when you do get it right, we should be able to make forecasts for the space environment, which is important for for you know for for uh, protecting our satellite based assets like telecommunications, GPS navigational networks, weather satellites, which is you know which is uh, India's you know is, is really dependent on right now. But the eclipses only provide you with very rare and sparse opportunity to develop, you know, to develop your understanding and test these models. So, so one of the ideas of, of the Aditya uh, L1 solar mission, which is India's first uh, satellite, uh, uh, which is going to be launched next year, in which many institutions like uh, IIA, uh, IUCA, PRL, SESI, uh, Isaac Kolkata, uh, ISRO uh, uh, are involved in is to actually continuously observe the corona. And the corona is, is sort of the lower boundary of the solar system. And anything that goes on in the corona eventually determines the conditions of the solar system. Uh, and so this continuous observation of the sun, sun's corona uh, through, through, for example, the, 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 one of the instruments, which is the variable emission line coronagraph, of which Deepankar is the, is the science uh, lead, uh, so the idea is to, to cover the the, the sun's uh, uh, surface with the artificial disk in front of the telescope, so that you can continuously observe the the, the thin uh, 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 layer of the outer solar corona, and from there we can make various observations. We can make observations, spectroscopic observations, looking at the, the, the you know the waves, the density profile, the temperature of the sun's corona, the velocity. We can measure the velocities of the plasma, the million degree plasma in the sun's corona. We can also, based on certain measurements, uh, figure out how the magnetic structures form and evolve and give rise to this this massive solar storms, uh, uh, which can impact uh, satellites which, which are orbiting the Earth. So these are some of the fantastic opportunities that uh, that uh, that Aditya L1 satellite is going to present. And of course, Durgesh, who I don't see now, who is at Ayuka, is leading the development of the Solar Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope. Uh, this is also a very unique instrument um, in the sense that it will be imaging the sun in in uh, in uh, a certain range of ultraviolet wavelengths, which you do not necessarily which you do not get low down on Earth. You have to be outside the Earth's atmosphere because the Earth's upper atmosphere absorbs much of it. And because the Earth's upper atmosphere absorbs much of this radiation, it also plays a very important role in driving the upper atmospheric dynamics and the climate system. Uh, so, so this very really important instrument that's being built at IUCA will also provide a long-term measurement of uh, the, the ultraviolet radiation from the sun, which will play a very important role in feeding in, in, in the climate models. And also, of course, it will also make another, you know, other other important observations. For example, the, the, the energy transfer and the dynamics in the lower uh, solar atmosphere. There are also instruments which are in-situ instruments which will measure the properties of of space. At the place where the satellite is located, which is uh, at Lagrange Point L1, um, uh, somewhere uh, close to the Earth, but in, in the Sun Earth line, uh, and so from from these measurements, we can figure out what space environmental conditions exist near Earth, uh, and therefore, based on this, we can make forecasts for space weather. Uh, so this is a, a very important investment that India has made in this Aditya L1 solar satellite. 
and it's, it's amazing in the sense that in you know in the foothills of the of of, of uh, in, in, along the same lines of the astrosat satellite multiple different educational institutions are involved and multiple students are involved in building the satellite this is truly a national effort and i think we are very proud to be associated with this uh, and i'm glad that you brought this up on on the occasion of this very much thanks dibendu i remember last year uh, during the, close to the uh, in fact during the uh, annual eclipse we were in uh, kerala actually doing a solar physics workshop there and so many students showed uh, so much interest and in general the crowd uh, the parents in the crowd were also asking how their children could uh, in the future uh, join solar or any kind of astrophysics so i think uh, such events do have their good positive effect and uh, also in these events we should talk about the modern uh, uh, way we look at the sun so thanks for sharing these details with us and uh, kerala reminds me that uh, dr anupurni is from uh, kerala so uh, we i have two requests to you one is uh, maybe if you could say something about uh, eclipses in malayalam uh, since you're trying to make it as multilingual as possible but other than that also uh, since uh, you also sometimes work on uh, stars so there's a question uh, from the internet uh, asking if such eclipses also happen happen for other stars so uh, dr anupuni are you around uh, to answer this yeah hey, i'm around yeah uh, hi samaria yeah so just a few things on malayalam for that matter um uh, yeah uh, uh, malayalathil avide astronomy ennu parayunnathu night time astronomy as well as day time astronomy adu rendum pracharathil undu and kutigal school il padikkunna kutigal thanne college students ellarum thanne bhayangaramayittulla oru interest ulla oru area aanu and adu kuda thanne awareness um oru vaadu thanne undu avade and akaiya december il keralathil koodal districts e annular kaanamayirunnu അപ്പൊ അതിന്റെ തന്നെ ഒരുപാട് അവയർനെസ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഒരുപാട് വർക്ക് ഷോപ്സുകൾ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു അങ്ങനെ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റീസ് കോളേജസ് എല്ലാം തന്നെ നല്ലോണം സപ്പോർട്ട് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരു ഏരിയ ആണ് ആസ്ട്രോഫിസിക്സ് അയ്യൂക്കട തന്നെ റിസർച്ച് സെന്റേഴ്സ് ഉണ്ട് കൊച്ചിൻ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി തന്നെ ഉണ്ട് എല്ലാ സ്കൂളുകളും കോളേജുകളും അത് പ്രോത്സാഹനം ഉണ്ട് അതിന് ആൻഡ് കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റി ആയിട്ട് തന്നെ അവര് ഓർഗനൈസ് ചെയ്ത് വ്യൂയിങ് അങ്ങനെ തന്നെ നടത്തുന്നുണ്ട് കൂടാതെ തന്നെ ഇങ്ങനെ എക്ലിക്സ് ടൈമിൽ ഇത് ചെയ്യരുത് അത് ചെയ്യരുത് അങ്ങനെ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു അവയർനെസ് കൂടുതലാണ് ആൾക്കാർ അങ്ങനെ കാര്യമായിട്ട് ഫോളോ ചെയ്യുന്നില്ല ആഹാരം കഴിക്ക കഴിക്കാൻ പാടില്ല അങ്ങനെ പുറത്ത് വരരുത് ആൾക്കാരെ നമുക്ക് കാണാൻ പറ്റുന്നുണ്ട് സോ പുറത്ത് അങ്ങനെ ആ സ്റ്റേറ്റിൽ തന്നെ ആൾക്കാർ ഈ ഇങ്ങനത്തെ വിചാരങ്ങളിൽ പെടാതെ കൂടുതലായിട്ട് പ്രോഗ്രസീവ് ആയിട്ട് കാണുന്നുണ്ട് അവിടെ ആൻഡ് കുട്ടികളും സ്റ്റുഡൻസും കോളേജുകളും ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസും നടത്തുന്നുണ്ട് എക്ലിപ്സും ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ സ്റ്റാൾസിനെ പറ്റി ദൻ ഐ മീൻ ദറ്റ്സ് ഓൾ ഐ ഹാവ് ടു സേ ഇൻ ഫോർ ദ മലയാളം തിങ് ആൻഡ് ഫോർ ദ സ്റ്റാർ ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് എക്ലിപ്സസ് ഹാപ്പൻ സോ ഇറ്റ്സ് വണ്ടർഫുൾ വി ഹാവ് സ്റ്റാർസ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് ലൈക്ക് ദ സൺ ഇസ് എ സിംഗിൾ സ്റ്റാർ but then you have stars uh, are uh, when they are born they can also be born as uh, binaries so one star going around the other and in which case what happens is if the two stars are in your plane then obviously one has to go in front of the other right so those uh, systems definitely bring out eclipses so they are called eclipsing binaries so this eclipsing binaries have light curves typical light curves periodic light curves so light curves are found and many such systems are studied and which are very very important to understand and measure the fundamental properties of uh, 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 the binaries and they they also help us to calibrate our mass radius relation etc so fundamental relations are also uh, uh, calibrated using the uh, eclipsing binary so eclipsing binaries are definitely there and the eclipsing as part of it you all actually get the both the eclipses the big eclipse and the small eclipse so detailed studies are definitely done using that let's answer your question samir yes of course <laughs> yeah so there, there's I mean, can i can i bring in a different topic here so i was looking at the comments 
Uh, and I think at some point in time, uh, when you did not have any women astronomers in this in this in this um, uh, list of must have been a very little uh, time. <laughs> yes, there was a comment, and this comment was, "Why are there no women astronomers? Why are there no women scientists here?" So I think this is an important comment. We should not brush it under the carpet. Well, there are some right now. I think we should talk a little about what are the astronomy institutions. I mean, this is a problem in the sense that we 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 astronomers, physicists, we acknowledge that there are very few women uh, scientists in, in India. This is not just a problem in India. This is a problem, in, you know, in, in much of the world, including including in the U.S. By the way, about you know the numbers I'm aware of in the U.S. Um, but we are very conscious about it, and especially the Astronomical Society of India. I don't see Anupama, who is actually the president. Uh, she's a woman scientist. She's in fact the president of the Astronomical Society of India. I see her here today. But nonetheless, we are, you know, the Astronomical Society of India has a, a, a panel which is devoted to looking at these issues and, and try to address it in a way that we can encourage more women astronomers, women scientists to come up and take up the sciences. Uh, maybe you could discuss a little bit, maybe Shomak and Arnapunni, maybe even Priya, they can talk a little bit about their perspectives on how we, you know, we are dealing with this and moving forward. How are we encouraging diversity in, um, you know, in, in, in astronomy? Well, I mean, this is, uh, I think uh, um, I, you highlighted a very important point. I mean, just the, um, the, uh, the participation of um, some of the major uh, Indian uh, astronomers, uh, uh, women astronomers today in this webcast shows that uh, uh, that there are leading women uh, in, in Indian astronomy. But I think in general, what has happened is that, I mean, we, we are uh, in India, the number of women who go into uh, uh, science in general follows the, uh, the, the trend in the world of uh, in physics, we see worldwide 20 to 30 percent of students uh, in, in universities uh, in, in physics and mathematics departments, higher, much higher in biology. Uh, uh, we see uh, a, a progression in which uh, women, there are fewer women in the, uh, in, in, in the faculty positions and, and in top directorial positions, even fewer, it happens all over the world. And uh, this certainly is uh, something that we have to reverse. We have to bring in more opportunities uh, for women. And uh, um, just, just today, uh, you, you saw uh, some of the, the best participants in, in, in every way in, in this discussion uh, um, uh, just brought in the fact that uh, I think gender uh, should not be an issue in science, but it is. And uh, it, it's not just in science, in, in, in many other fields. And we have to uh, make sure uh, to find out, and this is what this group in ASI has done very well, uh, is to find out what the typical uh, problems are in uh, in uh, in the in the life of a, a girl, a, 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 a woman, uh, in uh, in coming into uh, sciences and staying in sciences till the very end, uh, and and uh, and and making it to the top, and and then to figure out whether we are doing enough to encourage people to come in. Uh, I think. Uh, an event like this is very good. Uh, if uh, I'm, I, I see four or five thousand people watch today uh, this this uh, this webcast, uh, I'm sure uh, half of them are women, and and they should feel that um, <clears throat> the opportunities in science in general and education is there, are, are, are there um, us, uh, to uh, to encourage people to come into science. Thank you. Maybe Arnapurni, if you want to add your own perspectives uh, to that, that would be nice actually for for whoever is listening. Um, yeah, so thank you. Uh, for uh, Yeah, this is definitely an important point. And uh, uh, as a woman, it is uh, not so easy to rise up in any career for that matter, and particularly in STEM. And uh, there is definitely a kind of a feel or some complex at some point developing in that, am I good enough? So that should not be there at all. So if, when you are even writing an entrance exam to any, uh, any kind of courses, you feel that, oh, maybe boys would do better than me. So no, definitely not. The girls are definitely good. So the complex should not be there. The girls have to also feel that what you, I can definitely do it kind of a thing. And second, uh, I mean, uh, recent years, you can definitely see more and more number of uh, girls coming into even engineering education, IITs. The fraction of two, uh, girls are still much less in any courses like that. And even if you look at uh, 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 um, um, mathematics, still we have to push. I mean, 
people have to more uh, fraction has to increase definitely over there and uh, that is to even into the getting into the stream and then second sustaining uh, your presence in that field requires a lot of support from the family also because many things come in your way so as when uh, you pass out of your post graduation the parents start thinking about marriage more than the fact that how will i make my kid or a daughter get into a phd or a science career more than that the thinking is coming from how do you get married and of course social pressure is there that, that question keeps coming oh my god your daughter is not married so marriage becomes the you know the priority when, i mean when compared to continuation of the education in many cases you have to literally fight with the family saying that no i want to continue my studies i don't want to get married so that is a definitely a social awareness has to be there marriage comes only when a person is ready for it not because society decides that a person should get married so that is a difficult thing and of course i mean I, that's not a something bad for a person to happen you can definitely get married but the problem is that you uh, additional responsibilities additional division of time against people starts so in order to uh, you know to have a focused uh, 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 you know dedicated time to do research or dedicated to time to do uh, uh, solve a problem chase up uh, you know your passion it you have limited time because that time you everybody has 24 hours a day so you have to slice that time you have to, against different priorities and you cannot deprive someone of your attention who is literally asking for your attention so it becomes a overwhelming task on the person to carefully discipline yourself to make sure that you take up a, a problem and address it and complete it but all that i can tell you is that people who somehow wait through that and become uh, uh, uh you know get married you have family or to look after your parents in law your your own parents your kids everybody together so you get more and more disciplined at it you are you are focused you are fighting and you your 24 hours is split into too many slices which you know partition according to whatever is the need so you have only one so small partition for yourself to do research and unless and until your discipline and focus that never gets done so if you look at people who have been able to do all this way through this thing the the strength or the people the, the women who go through this and come out it's it's a, actually a quite a bit of a uh, you know struggle but yeah. then without focus and without discipline this, this doesn't get done it's a huge amount of uh uh you know discipline yourself to get it done and second thing is you might have to stop many things which you wanted to do otherwise you can't you just don't have time so focus on whatever you know the, the most important thing and get it done so uh for a person for a woman to so uh, attend to so many things and still do it is because at home priority will be that oh my god my my favorite dish is not made Mm -hmm. or someone will come and say that oh my god how is your house looking like this for that person the priority is that for for uh, a woman who is handling multiple things nobody looks at that so mm -hmm. that's very strange society does not understand that so uh, somebody to wade through this is not very easy and at many points you will think that oh my god why am i struggling with so many things so no is not the answer don't stop it <laughs> don't stop it and let other people who are asking for share let them know what is your passion and tell them that look i will give you a little less time than what you actually are demanding because i want to take that bit of small part to do what i want to do and when you please be happy because you i also need to be happy i also want to do it so share the excitement make them also feel that you know i want to do this because i am passionate about it just and okay. i am also letting you do whatever you are passionate about so why don't you let me also do what i am passionate about so you have to share the excitement let them think that yes that person also needs time and dedication and uh, so it's like a game but then you have to take everybody along it's not you cannot stop your um, personal life because you are doing research everything has to go together it's a package deal okay thank you yeah, thank you so, all the people for, for sharing this yeah yeah
So, I mean, yes, I think Karnapurni says the challenges that a women scientist faces are, are probably somewhat more than, than, than a man faces and a man faces. And this is something that is not nice and we should be all, all aware of this in terms of providing an equal opportunity to everybody. I don't know that Priya has anything to add. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, this sure. is something I mean, we all like to talk about. Uh, and yeah, okay. uh, yeah so I, uh, even when the sessions, uh, thanks Dipendra for bringing out this topic. This is an important one. And uh, when the thing started in the, in, the, in the beginning itself, I noticed that, yes, the number of females on this was very, very little. And uh, probably we should have, uh, you know, on behalf of POAC, we should have been careful to see to it that there was a balance. But, you know, it was slightly this thing. Uh, but, yeah, I would say that the problem is a threefold problem. The first problem is the initiation problem in the sense the, the, psycho, the, the social problem that people think that girls can't do physics and maths. And hence, they don't initiate girls into physics and maths or astronomy for that matter. And so that's the initiation problem. The other problem is after the girl goes through it, right, she, you know, she still says she likes it, she does it. Then what happens is that then they, they comes up with the challenges, right? So if you have a student, a boy with the same kind of challenges, he's not going to face these kind of challenges. He's not going to prove how well he does time management and home management and all these managements. The girl has to all the time prove that she's going to be doing all that, right? And uh, uh, often uh, I, I always try to uh, do this that, you know, a lot of girls are given the idea that if you want to be a true professional, then you cannot get married, you cannot have children, you know, you have to sacrifice. And uh, it's really good that today the ones, the, the women we had on the panel, whether it's Annapurni or Prajwal or Harvinder or even me, all of us are mothers, right? So it's not that uh, girls have to be told that you have to sacrifice, you know, motherhood or a personal life just because for the cause of science, right? A balance is possible. And I think the, the most uh, positive message that can be given to girls are role models, right? If girls actually see other women who are managing it, right? Then they realize that, you know, it's not such a big deal. Yeah, XYZ has managed it. So what's the big deal? I do not need to sacrifice everything so that I get it. I can still have it all, right? So I think uh, as we are building up this, uh, you know, set of role models, which we have even in the Indian astronomy community, uh, I think that's a very positive message that's going out to girls because they can actually see women who are actually doing it. I agree also with uh, what Adapurni said that for women, it's a tougher deal because they have to prove that in spite of everything, they will, you know, squeeze out the time, etc., and do it while a man need not be so uh, disciplined, right? Because he doesn't have to do this kind of balance. So that it's so agreed, it's a much tougher job for women, but there is hope. And uh, like I said, the role models are the, uh, the message that we can give to the younger generation that it's, you know, it's all very doable. So I think that's what's important. Yeah, thanks. Thank, thank you, Priya. I think it's a difficult topic to bring up, but I think it's yeah. important that with so many listeners, I think we, we talk about difficult topics so we can acknowledge the problem and, and address it. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Samir, for veering off, but I think uh, you can now take over and, and take us to the rest of the eclipse. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, one of the highlights of uh, this webcast, so it's it's not just aimed just to show people an eclipse, it's also to inspire uh, people to join science, uh, people of all ages, genders, etc., to join science uh, or at least develop a scientific mentality. And uh, these problems need to be highlighted as well because that's what science does. It, it shows off its own problems, its own uh, faults, etc., and then it gets rid of them. So uh, rather than hiding uh, things... Uh, yeah any other uh, spheres. So uh, I, I think that that's been uh, really enlightening and all the, I can see a lot of comments uh, also thanking us for this discussion. Uh, hopefully this has been inspiring to boys as well as girls, especially with uh, uh, lady astronomers joining in this uh, discussion later. Because I'll just take a moment to say that uh, there was no bias in choosing uh, <laughs> lady astronomers. It was only a matter of how, uh, what time they were available, and therefore, uh, you might have found a little while when there were <laughs> no ladies on the screen. Anyway, so I, I draw your attention back to the to the eclipse, and uh, as Neeraj had been uh, uh, telling us that uh, the eclipse is being seen uh, uh, over a large part of the world, and <clears throat> in the east, uh, in the um, uh, in the African region, it has it has been over for a while now. 
India is just about to in India is just about to go uh, out. Uh, the, the moon is go, just about to go out from the sun's limb, and uh, you can see the feed <coughs> at top. I Hanley continues to be our best feed today, uh, where <coughs> only a slight part of the sun is hidden. However, we have feeds from China and Taipei in Taiwan, where uh, we have two lovely feeds, both showing a lovely crescent sun. And uh, both of them uh, are going to hopefully become uh, come close to the annularity very soon. So we'll keep looking at that. Uh, in uh, of course, in India, the feed will end about uh, 20 25 minutes from now when the moon is completely uh, out of the sun's face, and uh, we'll have the uh, eclipse over. So we have some time uh, for discussions to continue, and uh, if, if uh, I think Neeraj has something to say about eclipses uh, being used uh, and, and, and something about an eclipse on Mars. So Neeraj, can I get you back here? Uh, yeah, I think my video is off. You may need to turn it on again. Oh, okay. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, so thanks, thanks everybody in the panel for bringing up the issue of gender. I think it's very important. I'm very happy we had this discussion. And it's not just gender, we want astronomy and all of sciences to be accessible to everybody, which is also why we have multilingual uh, talks today. We want, we want diversity and, and equity, not just in gender, but also you know, in, in, in caste and in class and in, 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 in language and so on. And I think, uh, you know, I think we heard some really awesome stuff today about it. Uh, to go back to what uh, Anapurni Subhanam had said earlier about eclipses and other stars, uh, I also want to kind of tell people about eclipses within the solar system itself. Uh, there are some beautiful videos taken by satellites, our own satellites in space, of the solar eclipse uh, in, in both directions. What I mean is there's some amazing videos of, of satellites which are which are imaging the, the Earth. And you can see this, this, uh, you know, this fuzzy shadow of the moon going across the Earth's surface taken from space, and it's just amazing. So please do go search for it online. There are quite a few of them. Uh, but then there are also videos taken by solar telescopes in space, like Hynod and so on, which actually look at the sun uh, and then photograph the solar eclipse, and, and that's just completely different from how it looks like to us. And 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 those are I think those are two very different views of the solar eclipse from what we used to. I think people should go Google them and find out. Uh, but I also wanted, I also recently discovered, I thought it was fantastic, that uh, we have we have a tiny little uh, uh, car or a vehicle on Mars called uh, Curiosity Rover, uh, launched by NASA long back. And, Curios and Mars has satellites going around it. Like we have the moon, it has two satellites, Phobos and Deimos. Phobos is a bit bigger than Deimos. And uh, Curiosity rover actually has taken images of Phobos eclipsing not completely the sun, but a large part of the sun as seen from Mars. And there's some time lapse videos you can see online. So I thought that's really cool that not only do we know eclipses uh, from Earth's surface, we, we, we have seen eclipses from space uh, of the Earth or falling on the Earth, but we also now have a video of a solar eclipse from the moon of by its own satellite. I think it's really cool, you know, so, so from the Mars, sorry, from Mars uh, of, of by its own satellite. I thought, I thought people should go see that as well. Thanks, uh, Neeraj. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I think the people who missed, uh, you will mention again that eclipses happen with many planet and satellite systems. Uh, so sometimes the uh, uh, the satellite is quite big as compared to the uh, size of uh, apparent size of sun from the planet. So you see total eclipses. Sometimes satellites are quite small as compared to the apparent size. So you can see partial eclipses and annular eclipses, but not total eclipses in those cases. Earth moon is a unique system where we are able to see both total eclipses as well as annular e eclipses. The size of lunar disk as we see from Earth and size of solar disk as we see from Earth, they are just almost similar. So with a slight variation in moon's orbital uh, orbit, uh, distance from uh, Earth, we can see both the phenomena uh, from Earth. Yeah, and I, and I think one thing to realize is that uh, it's not just during an eclipse that the shadows uh, happen, right? Uh, all objects on, uh, on in, the, in the solar system uh, shine by sunlight, reflected off them, and therefore all bodies in the solar system have their shadows traveling behind them all the time. Right? It's not as if the shadow of the moon 
exists only during a solar eclipse. The shadow of the moon goes behind the moon all the time. The shadow of the earth goes behind the earth all the time as they go around the sun, right? And sometimes these shadows fall on each other's bodies, each, each other, each, other objects as well, and fall on each other. And that's when you have eclipses. You know, we've been looking at, for example, it's been for hundreds of years, we've been seeing the shadows of Jupiter satellites fall on Jupiter, for example, right? And in fact, you know, there was a famous experiment where the timing of these eclipses of, of, uh, of on Jupiter by its own satellites uh, led Romer to derive the speed of light very accurately, right? And, and therefore, these shadows, every, sh every body in the solar system has its shadow, which goes around it all, goes along with it all the time. You can't escape your own shadow, like, like people say. And these shadows sometimes fall on other objects. That's pretty much it. Nothing more than that. But when it does occur and you're, and you're in the shadow, it makes for an amazing, beautiful sight, like we are seeing right now. In fact, uh, it might be a good uh, thing to imagine how uh, things would look like on the moon. Uh, suppose you're on, a, on, a, on the moon on a lunar eclipse, and that then we would have a total eclipse of the sun by the Earth, which would be actually quite a spectacular event. Uh, but we are lucky that we have the moon, which can cover the sun 100% and for, a, for quite a bit, most of the time. Today, of course, we had uh, only the annular eclipse in which a slight ring was seen. Uh, it, it, now, in, in China, we, we see that uh, the <coughs> moon is almost about to cover the sun and uh, we may uh, want to keep looking at that field. Uh, while waiting for it, of course, I mean, uh, we have uh, so many scientists here who also uh, guide a lot of uh, students here. So uh, while uh, he's here, may I ask uh, Deepankar, uh, Deepankar to maybe uh, say something about uh, careers in astrophysics or solar physics, uh, since it is your speciality. Yeah, lots sure. of things just listening in. So Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Thank you very much. So I think, uh, you, you know, this is very important uh, subject area, you know, how to attract the most bright students for uh, generally for research and then that too for astrophysics, because astrophysics is not taught in, uh, you know, in, in an undergraduate or postgraduate studies that much. But that's not actually too much required as well, because astrophysics is not a very different branch of uh, physics. It is a application of physics only. So uh, only thing the awareness about the possibilities of different institutions and uh, different kind of research programs, in that, of course, you know, solar physics is the branch which I uh, work and the Bindu is also online. We have been, you know, attracted to uh, uh, quite early. But having said that, you know, when I joined the PhD program, I had no uh, knowledge about uh, the sky or for the sun at all. Somehow, after doing the first year coursework and so on and so forth, you know, uh, uh, we felt, uh, some of us felt that, you know, solar physics is a good branch to, you know, verify some of your knowledge of physics. So um, there are now opportunities within India. Of course, uh, Ayuka leads uh, 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 this information uh, to the different university sector, being a university nodal center. And uh, some of us who are there in somewhat isolated uh, research center, uh, we take this as a uh, big responsibility to let others uh, know that such opportunities exist. Uh, in a way, uh, you know, what you have organized today, uh, thanks to Astronomical Society of India, and I, I must thank actually Niraj, uh, who was the first uh, driver of this uh, program. And now uh, you are uh, Samir and Aniket, you are uh, taking the you know, uh, baton forward. Uh, these are very important avenue as well. So uh, through your platform, uh, the public outreach and education. So this is, a, this is an integrated program actually. Uh, we could now reach to uh, youngsters. And there are uh, many research institutes within the country uh, who offers a PhD program. There are certain institutes who offer also integrated PhD programs and uh, they're all, you know, uh, Mr. Mr. available. So Mr. that, Mr. I think, it's Second a good department. opportunity. Having yeah. annularity in, in uh, China, in the China field. So this, all right. Okay. This, just I uh, wanted to point uh, that out to people. It's being made full screen now, of course. Uh, and please enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. I will just um, so, go out and see the last phase of the eclipse from uh, outside. So we are still having a last phase uh, now. From yes, yes, of course, of course. And Samir, I have to unfortunately leave now because I have another engagement. So I, I wanted to say bye to you and to all of you, you and Aniket, who particularly put in and Neeraj put in this effort to, to do this. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to all of you. And, uh, you know, I mean, I hope that uh, we've been able to reach out in a, in a way that we 
uh, provide some excitement of what we are involved in about sciences to the general public. Uh, and I hope that some of these people who have been listening to us today, at some point in time, will come visit right. our institutions. Uh, Ayuka does a fantastic job of outreach. Uh, just so we, are, we, are, like, we are going into the annularity ring yeah. right now in, in China. So, right. so yeah, bye. <laughs> Right, uh, and and uh, we can actually see the moon slowly moving across the summits. It's an amazing sight. Uh, let's let's all enjoy, and then you leave. <laughs> we won't let you go before that. Yeah, because it's it's not it's not often that I think we can actually see you know something in the sky moving uh, yeah. which we can perceive directly, right? And now for the next two or three minutes, you can actually you can visualize the moon actually moving in the sky, and I think that's amazing. That's that's very special. Right. We we only know it, it moves thirteen day, degrees in a day, but this is this is the real thing. This is yeah. the, so, so if you look at the sky now, and maybe after an hour or two hours, you can see things that mood. You no know, sun is mood, stars are mood. But right. to to actually perceive directly the motion, you know, uh, every you know every few seconds is is very rare, and this is probably the only way we can actually do that. And I think that's that's brilliant. Now it's a perfect, it's a perfect thing. The edge is coming, uh, edge of the moon is coming close to the edge of the sun. Lovely capture and, and a very good capture. And we may happen to see the Bailey's beads. Some so we've seen the annular eclipse now three times so far. <laughs> Four actually. Uh, and maybe we'll do one more in Taiwan after, after a little bit. It's absolutely fantastic. This this feed from uh, from China. Oh, breathtaking. Just waiting for the baby's beads. There you go. Just a tiny bit of the sun now remaining till the third contact, and there it is. Okay, so the moon has passed across the sun's uh, little face, and this is the biggest crescent that you will see in the sky. <laughs> This gives us the correct uh, <clears throat> reason why we call it annular. Annular means a ring, uh, ring of, let's say, fire, or we could, as uh, solar physicists say, a ring of fusion that we are seeing out there uh, on the uh, of the sun's face, uh, hidden by the hidden by our own satellite, the moon, which is by coincidence about 400 times smaller than the sun, while it is also 400 times closer than the sun to us. So this ratio puts it at the perfect place to let us see this amazing sight in the sky. And the eclipses uh, do happen often. And uh, you know that there was an uh, annular eclipse seen from India in December. And uh, you're seeing one right now. <clears throat> but uh, other than that, this month itself has had three uh, eclipses, two lunar and one solar. And this is more because uh, the sun and the moon and the earth need to be aligned in proper uh, in a proper line, uh, and that happens only during certain periods when the orbital plane of the moon coincides with the orbital plane of the earth around the sun. So this is what we are seeing happening right now. The this is this is moon at the node where the plane of the moon's orbit cuts the. Earth's orbit around the sun. And we've just seen the result of that lovely coincidence uh, happening here. A annulus, an annular solar eclipse has just been witnessed. And we've, through this feed, witnessed it so many times. So <laughs> I, I can't feel uh, far more uh, exhilarated by any other uh, thing on the internet now, I think. There's um, one more, one more annular eclipse coming from Taiwan soon. <laughs> So uh, I don't was seeing a lovely picture. Uh, I I, don't, I forget which year. Uh, there was a picture I think from the US a few years ago, uh, where a partial eclipse like this was the sun was rising as a partial eclipse, 
and the photograph was taken from a highway in the middle of nowhere right and then you could get these horns you get these horn like partial eclipses rising up and it was just beautiful <laughs> yes so astrophotography is a, is a is a something you can revel in especially during eclipses because it's an unearthly sight and if it's particularly happening close to the horizon you can get amazing uh, you know zoomed in shots of the sun moon uh, come very earthly sight <laughs> well yes it's it's actually an only <laughs> earthly sight right <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> right any reactions uh, Mr. Rai Chaudhary. No, great. I mean, as I, I, I was looking through social media right now for people uh, posting pictures of uh, their their experiences. It's absolutely amazing and overwhelming. And I love the way. I mean, as as Neeraj also said before, that he's sitting in South Africa. I'm sitting here in in Pune, and we are watching the same eclipse uh, progress all through um, the world, which is not where we are. and uh, through the um, social media we can we can see all this this is absolutely fantastic and waiting for the taiwan view but people doing things in very creative ways looking at uh, taking pictures um, both through the internet as well as going out if you look at um, astrophotography you talked about people as i said uh, doing various innovative things with pinhole cameras i told earlier about how you can use uh, the the gaps between the leaves on the on the uh, on on the ground and people producing wonderful pictures of them here in ayuka we have a dome in which we have these holes that represent stars and those pin holes in the dome have produced lovely um, crescent sun images on on the ground uh, and uh, we just uh, just looking at uh, the uh, pictures from uh, dorje angchuk from hanle um, uh, not just producing this lovely feed but he's produced these lovely pictures of creatively uh, crafted masks of pinholes and uh, and then uh, have pro- uh, projecting pictures of those on the ground lovely lovely wonderful uh, so this is social media is is just full instagram you will just see how many pictures are coming of people's own experiences and this is where you know i mean we are talking of 1980 somebody said here that they were not allowed i mean anirudh said and other people said we're not allowed to go out to watch this this is not just in india all over the world people were afraid of of watching eclipses now if your mother doesn't want to <laughs> want to uh, let you go out of the house switch on the internet you can watch the eclipse and uh, i just was on a tv channel uh, fighting with an astrologer and a tantric who were saying that pregnant women should not watch the eclipse i said what do they do at night when you have a shadow of the earth right so <laughs> you know this this is the kind of thing so these things bring us bring the uh, the universe into our lives Uh, on these rare occasions and i love that i love the fact that people are engaging with the sun and the moon and the universe right now that's 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 the best thing here and as you mentioned that uh, we are watching from different continents and we are getting feeds from different continents the international astronomical union theme under one sky okay under really sky. Big, yeah. uh, comes alive in such moments anika i want to wanted to also one mention one quick thing before i go and that is you know i mean it it's uh, eclipses are featured in literature quite a lot i mean you and i can think of our favorite stories or uh, i mean the famous tintin of course uh, prisoner of the sun when tintin uh, you know gets off because he knows exactly when the eclipse is that is taken essentially from a mark twain uh, um, uh, uh, novel called uh, you know connecticut yankee in king arthur's court where the same thing happens if you know when so eclipses play wonderful you know in 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 fiction as well uh, in in our myths uh, i i was thinking about uh, uh, whether we have uh, we remember uh, incidences like the eclipse from the mahabharata where uh, you know when jayadratha dies for example the sun is eclipsed probably and wonderful thing was we saw an eclipse from kurukshetra today right so <laughs> and and so think of think of the connections between a possible a uh, solar eclipse that happened probably during the kurukshetra war and so the, it's it's in it, eclipses are in in our in our lives in our in our myths in our fiction in our uh, in our uh, in our stories in our tales and this is when people go out on occasions like this and actually experience the real thing and i think it's much larger than life much larger than um, you know um, what we do uh, as scientists uh, studying these things it just connects people to to these events Yeah, I just wanted to point out that uh, this uh, uh, I, this feed also helped us to 
uh, see how the I mean, it was changing from the western part you know it went on to the we had uh, 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 you know almost close to uh, annular eclipse in hanley and then moved on and then it if as and when the time changes it moved on to the east so it's not like the uh, uh, it's happening it throughout the region at the same time so you can see the progression and you can see that as uh, as and when the uh, angle when the earth is rotating so different parts get the uh, umbra so that is when you have the eclipse happening so uh, we understand i mean if you think about why it is happening it's also a, re, uh, a particular occasion to uh, analyze why this is happening so so in real terms where are these uh, uh, bodies located you know what are their dynamics makes it happen so everyone has to be more curious to understand why 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 is it happening so here in this demonstration itself we saw that we had uh, close to totality at different regions at different times so I, i i really urge people to think more on various aspects of so it. i also wanted to add in this that um, it is great that uh, we could make such uh, progress right right now uh, that we can predict eclipses to great accuracy we know exactly when they will happen where they will happen uh, in fact you can go to uh, some websites which even give the predictions for hundreds of years uh, from today right um, and so this tells us how um, how we have we have been able to understand this physical phenomena understand all the parameters that are required in order to even predict what is going to happen in the future right and uh, i'll just draw your attention to uh, with this to the feeds on the uh, from the various places that we have uh, we had our good luck to see the chinese uh, <laughs> annular ring right now uh, the one at the bottom from uh, taipan is not going to be annular and so it has just passed its uh, maximum phase it's going to be a nice crescent but it's uh, too south to be uh, an annular eclipse at the hanley field you can see that the moon is slowly slowly just going off the face so that's kind of bringing us close to the end of this uh, lovely session which has uh, seen all of you participating with such <coughs> enthusiasm and sharing with the uh, viewers and uh, maybe their families who are also watching along uh, the 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 minute aspects and the uh, important uh, learnings from the eclipses so uh, i we could we could just wait a little bit more and uh, maybe i could ask uh, any of you if you want to point out any particular uh, uh, astronomical event other than an eclipse which uh, you would like people to see and which is coming up uh, in in the near future so i mean venus and mercury transits are uh, beautiful as well right uh, i need to check when it's going to come uh, next not venus transit but venus is Vinus not going to come near till here but a lifetime right 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 yeah but <laughs> no these are beautiful that's what i'm saying <laughs> these are one of the uh, amazing phenomena that you can see uh, when the disk of these planets it moves on top of the sun um but eclipses of uh, of the moons uh, of jupiter right uh, those are really beautiful like if you have a, even a 6 inch telescope uh, ayuka has all these programs where you can actually grind your own telescopes um and so if you have a 6 inch telescope so i have done it myself as well uh, you can look at jupiter and if you are looking at it at the right time then you can see them uh, the shadow of a moon sliding around the disk of jupiter as well so right now you cannot get a view of how it would be looking for someone from uh, outside so someone in space and looking on the earth how the shadow of the moon uh, is moving yeah. around the earth wow. uh, but you can see something like this uh, if you are going to look at uh, the eclipse phenomena yeah. happening for so jupiter and its moon that's a full term in there that's where we slowly yeah. so we have the uh, last contact at hanley the moon has exited the solar disk yeah i just wanted to add that you can see a clear sun no spots the sun is not at all active now so it's very quiet sun and uh, this full disk is very so clean 
No blemishes. Amazing that uh, that our viewers uh, w- watched the entire Hanley feed from the beginning to the end, and uh, um, it, it's been wonderful. There, I think there were no clouds at all. You, there were there were a couple of minutes, some um, close to the un- maximum, like a few minutes. There were some passing clouds. Beyond that, I mean, besides that, there is there was uh, it was quite clear, and also the feed didn't break, so that's also very good. So we thank you for getting us this feed from the one of the best places in India to do astronomy research from. In fact, yeah, and we also have a very strong team. They are very motivated team, so that really makes a difference. Right. So we really appreciate all the efforts that everybody has put into making these feeds possible for everybody to see and enjoy from the, their homes. Uh, not just because of superstitions, but because of this particular. Uh, the, the ailment that has been going around these days. People have been at home and getting frustrated because there's hardly anything new happening. And they want to go out. But uh, yes, we, we could bring this to their houses, the, to their homes. They have also been participating in various activities that they themselves can do while uh, they are listening to us. So they've projected things, uh, projected the uh, images of the sun onto their walls, onto their corners of their houses. Uh, through their windows or to other people's houses, maybe, and uh, they've used uh, sieves and other things to see these beautiful, uh, you know, shapes made out of small, small crescents. So it's been a it's been a great experience, and everybody had fun. Uh, we've had around five thousand uh, viewers uh, at the peak of this, and that's uh, probably just uh, you know, if we add all the other people who are watching with them, that would be a much higher number. So this has been a relatively uh, successful feed and I also have two uh, team members Ishan and Atharva who are working in the background you know combining all these feeds and getting uh, all these things uh, correctly placed etc on the feed so I thank them as well uh, they are part of the Ayuka science popularization team we also have a group of other team members who are working online who are constantly uh, answering questions they are from the Ayuka SciPop team as well as from the uh, Astronomical Society of India's POEC team so uh, it's it's been a great effort, and uh, I I know it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, slightly sad that we we all wish to go to the uh, annularity belt and see it for ourselves, but then we did experience it three four times uh, on this field. So that's I think good enough for now. And uh, I would of course <clears throat> like to thank everyone for uh, taking out their time, enjoying this with us, being here for so long, and uh, also for sharing some and snacks with us <laughs> while you were here uh, that's perfectly okay to do and uh, now we are all probably uh, looking to go for lunch <laughs> so with that and if there are any other final comments uh, i would uh, like to slowly bring this uh, session to an end uh, aniket uh, you have uh, final words and others also are welcome to say something Th- thanks to everybody all the pi- panelists who uh, uh, took out time on a Sunday morning to uh, spend this uh, time with us and, uh, and also answer various questions from the audience. Uh, so it is uh, not just one institute or two institutes, it's a multi-institutional effort. You can see participation from many, many different institutes and across the country, different parts of the country. So our Indian astroph- astronomy community always works together on such projects and uh, we would continue to doing so, so in the future as well. Yeah, I also would like to thank the IAA uh, outreach team and uh, you know teams at various field stations to bring in all the feeds. And it was like uh, the control room in the auditorium to bring everything and make sure that things work. So yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks, Aniket and Samir for for hosting this all together. And, and Priya, yeah, it was very yeah, nice. Uh, and- uh, it's wonderful. And the entire team, Neeraj, wonderful idea. And I think this gives us a template for how we can do such things in the future, bringing in people from all over the country. And uh, and uh, in various uh, stages, we can do all day events, if you want, on uh, on, on, su- on such occasions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thanks, Thank thanks everybody, for organizing it. I know a lot of work went into the background. I know, like Samir mentioned, people whose faces we're not seeing were sitting at the back, making sure all this is, all this is possible. So thanks, everybody. And also, you know, uh, we like doing this because, uh, you know, people uh, give back uh, enthusiasm hundredfold, right? And and like somebody mentioned, there are thousands of people who are online and looking at, I've been looking at the comments all along. 
and and there's a lot of enthusiasm and interest from the people watching it for about what we did and also they want to know more right and it is that enthusiasm and interest from the people who like what we're doing that that wants us to you know that makes us want to do many more such events so you know we kind of hopefully feed off each other's uh, excitement about this because eclipses are, are after all you know astronomers can study eclipses historically but eclipses are for the people is for everybody not just scientists it's for the public at large and it's 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 a grand it's it's a grand global science festival every eclipse is a global global science festival and i think i'm very happy to be a part of it thanks it's a audience. biannual festival so you can continue <laughs> doing it <laughs> like all festivals it will come again yeah also like the multilingual aspect of today's program i think we i don't know we covered about 10 languages or so Um, yeah, so that that was that was a really good thing. Very good, and thanks, Surut. That was fantastic. Well, I also hope that uh, this actually helps to inspire many of these students uh, who may be listening in, and also their parents to get their kids into astronomy. And we will be very, very happy to welcome um, both uh, male, female, uh, all sorts of castes and creeds, everyone into astronomy. This is a unifying field. um and uh, we want to see you uh, come up and to study astronomy do research in all these institutes and to join us as panelist uh, in the next eclipse at some point thanks so uh, yes I, i priya had to leave and she's been also uh, coordinating part of this activity so uh, she says goodbye to everyone uh, well i i have to end by uh, acknowledging uh, the uh, the presence of uh, professor jain nallikar who has been one of the best uh, science scientists and science uh, popularizers of the country and i remember seeing such a feed about 10 years ago uh, or 20 years ago in fact <laughs> the time has passed uh, and and seeing him on tv live doing a very similar thing and it's been an uh, aspiration to do the do the same and i'm glad that this chance has come to us i hope this doesn't continue that we have to do everything online forever <laughs> because of uh, various kinds of new viruses that keep coming up uh, but uh, this has definitely been a, an ex- great experience and we have learned so much about uh, technology uh, not just of seeing the eclipses but also showing eclipses and sharing uh, a lot of science with people we will con- keep continuing do- doing this the asi poc and ayuka saipop and all the members from iia outreach team also and the other uh, groups who have uh, taken efforts to go out <coughs> in the field and show us these fields uh, feeds uh, we promise that we'll keep bringing you all these events whatever uh, happens and uh, we'll keep inspiring you and uh, sharing with you all these excitement forever so with that uh, let me close this session and we'll show keep showing you the hanle lovely uh, sun from hanle and uh, just now got <laughs> completely got rid of the moon so uh, keep enjoying this and we'll join you again uh, do subscribe to our channel and uh, we look forward to many more resources that we share online with it thank you thank you thanks everybody <laughs>